all right so let us start today's session you can just okay thank you thanks a lot so welcome all of you for this session we have met earlier i have met most of you earlier um few of you might be new for my session and uh, Previously, I have taught you the component of Indian society and social justice. All the boys, please switch off your camera. I'm not supposed to see you, like, and that will be fairly distractive. So you can switch off your camera, and uh, we will entertain the part of discussion after the session is over. All right. So let us start. So previously, I have taught you the component of Indian society and social justice, and. Um, as per the fact you people have been exposed to the syllabus we are going to discuss the component of uh, the social issues which is there in the prelims so the question is how do we see the possibility of social issues in prelims i'm going to share that with you people um so here as we are going to start with this component i would like to first and foremost enumerate the syllabus and then give you a brief idea how we are going about with it okay so in your prelims syllabus as all of you can see there is this component written current events of national and international importance so anything which is taking place even of social importance related to any national event or international event that can also be covered under the component of social issues that is one segment like for example we saw the component of racism erupting right in terms of george floyd in us so uh, something related to racism can be asked okay so like there can be some specific questions like juneteenth day that can be asked i'll be discussing all of it later just giving you a brief idea about what kind of topics can qualify what kind of topics can come and how to go about with it and as most of you are aware of the fact that i first start with the syllabus giving you a rough idea that what the syllabus is basically aspiring to ask and empower you with so the current events related to national and international importance anything which is pertaining to the social domain shall be covered by me i'll try to cover all the important topics but still there will be a space whereby you learn how to improvise if there is any new information or there is new updation you are supposed to update yourself accordingly the way i'll train you in the forthcoming hours the second component which is there you can see there is economic and social development sustainable development poverty inclusion demographics social sector initiatives etc so the moment we say the topic demographics it will be associated with population and it will be related to rural and urban population growth and how the dynamics is shifting due to migration maybe the sex ratio maybe the birth rate the mortality rate the incidence of disease and how people are getting affected by it when we are saying social sector initiatives that will be associated with education health and it will also be associated with like let us consider the scope of uh, uh, human resource which is a broader phenomenon then you have public policy so anything related to the public policy that is what the government is framing uh, like let's say the central government is framing or the state government is framing or the cooperation is there between the two in the form of centrally sponsored schemes or there is also a possibility in terms of this public policy the upsc can also discuss something associated with an intervention whereby the self help groups or ngos are also incorporated they are also helping when we say rights issues rights are associated with the entire population in general but specifically those people who are vulnerable or exploited they can be women they can be children the minority the scheduled caste the scheduled tribe etc i have been posted that uh, your current affairs has already been covered till the month of march so uh, i would be prioritizing the recent events but at the same time i'll also take up those issues which have also not been covered till march so i cross check what are the topics which have been covered and what are left so i'll try to create a wholesome understanding for all of you related to what has been important till now means till yesterday all the information that has been there in news and that is associated with my area then related to this i just created an insight in terms of the previous year question paper so that 
you first get an idea how questions are framed. See, we all know that the current affairs material is replete in the market. All of us are able to see or have an accessibility in this era of Telegram and like, you know, so many multiple websites, institutions. There is no dearth of facts and information. The problem is that despite of the fact we are reading so much, we are reading like uh, from multiple sources, we are going on and on, consulting so much, referring so much, yet when it comes to answering the question, we tend to get confused. We see the question and we are like, oh, this, this, this is that I had read it, but uh, this is perfectly all right, but I'm not sure whether this option is correct or not. So this dilemma that you experience how you get stuck in that dilemma, what are the possibilities and how to read the information whereby you don't get stuck in that dilemma. So I'll be also teaching you how to sieve the information or in other words, how questions are created. Once everyone learns how questions are framed by the examiner means once you're able to see through the intent of the examiner, how the examiner frames the question, once a student learns that part, then the role of a teacher is completed because a child is empowered by himself or herself how to handle the competition, right? So when we are going ahead with this, I just created four questions, two questions for two, from 2019 and two questions from 2018, just to give you an insight how questions are created and how you are supposed to sieve the information. So just remember, I'll keep quoting this like later also when I'm discussing any scheme or policy, I'll keep saying that, see, this is the scheme that we had seen that was asked in 2019 or 18. And this is how you come across with the information. This is how you handle the information. So let us see. Here, the first question that I have taken up from 2019 prelims, as you can see, it's 2019 prelims, but they have asked the 2017 Maternity Benefit Act, or rather the Amendment Act. So the thing is, any current affairs information which is quite prominent and has not been asked in prelims for like let us say past two years or three years that can also be asked in the forthcoming prelims means if you're appearing for 2020 or like let us say a few of you who are just listening to the lecture for the sake of learning something new but are not aspiring to attempt this prelims you are targeting 2021 even for you these lectures will be helpful for the simple reason what i'll be dealing with if it is not asked this year, it can qualify as a prelims question the next year. And the proof is just in front of you that a 2017 act was asked in 2019, two years later. So as you can see the question, it's saying that which of the following statements is are correct regarding the maternity benefit, uh, benefit amendment act, right? And in this question, they have given you three options and they're asking you to choose between the quotes. The first statement is saying pregnant women are entitled for three months pre-delivery. Now here is the cliche, three months. Here are the, I would say, lacunas or areas from where you can see that this is how the examiner tries to confuse you. Okay, so you are just underlining it mentally in the examination hall. Right now, I have the liberty to underline so that I can highlight how questions are created. So you can see it's saying the three months pre-delivery and then it is saying three months post-delivery and then it is paid leave. So the thing is, is this act empowering a pregnant mother with six months leave? Is it six months exactly? Is it six months before, six months later, such a provision whereby the leave is divided into two halves? Or is it like free for the mother that she can avail the six months anytime she aspires for? If it is for any time, then also this point will be incorrect. Or if it is more than six months or less than six months, then also this statement will be incorrect. So these are the ways in which examiner tries to create a confusing aspect for you. If you're not very pertinent with the fact, if you have not mastered, if you have not, like, let's say, crammed the fact properly, you may get confused between the options. So this is one segment. Second statement says enterprises with crashes means all those industries or those, like, let us say, business initiatives, which have crashes must allow the mother minimum six crash visits daily. Crash is a place, a people call it crash. Don't call it crash. That's an incorrect pronunciation. Okay. It's called a crash. So like, let's say crash is a place where the baby is kept and the mother can come and check the well-being of the baby. There will be a helper nurse who will be kept over there. 
who will be taking care of the baby so that no baby is going erratic or uh, is not falling ill or if the mother needs to be contacted she can be contacted duly now here you can see enterprises with crashes must allow the mother minimum six crash visits daily now the question is is it six are you very confident about the six part and then it is saying women with two children get reduced entitlements is there a scope of reduced entitlements or even if you, it's your third baby fourth baby seventh baby whatever it is you will be provided with the six months leave as it is saying so the question is is it the same the provision is same for all types of mothers or the provisions vary according to the number of pregnancy that you are experiencing the number of baby that you are experiencing so here they have given you a quote now the question arises what should be the correct answer so you can see that how the confusion is created i have created the explanation as well for you so the answer is c as all of you can see just a second i need to handle this in a more smarter manner okay so as all of you can see the answer is c the maternity benefit act 2017 provides for 26 weeks leave so the moment we say 26 that means 6 and a half months so the moment on the top it is saying 3 months before 3 months after the first point gets negated it becomes incorrect then it is saying women are expecting after having two children means more than two means it's your third child or above then they get 12 weeks paid maternity leave so 12 weeks if we are talking about it okay so that is what so if you divide it by 4 you'll find out 3 so rather than 6 and a half months you get tentatively 3 months leave and that is for more than two two plus children then you will get three months leave then you can further see the maternity leave can be availed eight weeks before the expected date of delivery right so when we are saying eight weeks before that means you can start the maternity leave when you are aspiring for it if one month has four weeks then that is like two months before the expected date of delivery so two months prior to your delivery you can start taking the benefit of this specific act that the act mandates for establishing crash facilities at organizations employing 50 or more employees now 50 or more means if it is a smaller organization which has 25 or 40 employees it is not bound to have a crash and you cannot legally pressurize it to have a crash that is another like a condition imposed and then it is saying the women employees are permitted to visit the crash facility four times now going by this information if you would have segregated many students what they do they come under jay bajrang bali mode okay what they do they'll see this they'll underline this entire thing maternity benefit act 2017 rather than encircling it i'm doing it through your method how mostly you people do rather than using my method okay so many students underline it like this maternity benefit act 2017 provides for 26 week paid leave for women employees women who are expecting after having or say two children get 12 pre paid maternity leave availed it uh, ashutosh sahu please switch off your camera so availed 8 uh, weeks before the expected date of delivery after that then another child will be like okay the act mandates establishing crash facility at organizations employing 50 or more employees and then the women employees are permitted to visit Uh, visit the crash daily for four times now practically you have underlined the entire paragraph so like let us say after 6 months okay or like let us say after 2 uh, months if a child is revising there is a lot of bulk to be revised because you have created that bulk by underlining so much so first thing which i really want to empower you with is please understand how questions are created once you understand how questions are created you will be smart or more intelligent in sieving information which can qualify as a prelims question the same information what parts will be pulled out and how confusion will be created for you for the prelims that understanding will be developed see a good lecture is supposed to be not by just giving a lot of information to you but also empowering your skills so that even when i am not there you are capable to handle any challenge by your own self so try to imbibe this skill so that after this lecture you don't need any other lecture you are just consulting the right material and when it comes to right material i was provided with um, 
some material provided by apti plus i was going through it who is using the pen please don't use the pen it is supposed to be used only by me some child has just uh, like used uh, the, just don't touch the screen please whosoever is doing that because i am unable to then edit it please understand that so and if you want the lecture to like function smoothly please don't indulge in this kind of stupidity anyone whosoever has done that okay and i'm unable to just function it because it has been uh, created in, and curated in that format all right so getting back to this when we are talking about any kind of scheme any kind of policy or any kind of intervention whether it is governmental or it is in support with certain ngos or other bodies voluntary organizations etc what you are supposed to do is you need to understand that how an intervention is created how from that intervention questions can be created so that you don't fall in the trap of silly mistakes that you you can commit for the examiner all right so i don't know which child has created this thing but it is just the child has created a paint or something and my entire screen is now pink and i feel like pausing the session because of this because now all the screens will be having the same kind of thing yeah thank you who so ever did it idiot okay now going ahead with this so previous year questions for insight building when i'm discussing about this you need to understand that uh, the dimensions which we are discussing 2017 question the question how it was asked pregnant women are entitled for 3 months okay of pre delivery and 3 months of post delivery now the moment it is saying 3 plus 3 it gets defeated the moment we see underneath it 6 and a half so this option goes incorrect then enterprises with creches must allow minimum 6 visits whereas we know it is 4 visits right so this also goes incorrect then we say women with two children get reduced entitlements yes we know that because rather than getting this uh, so called uh, 26 weeks they are getting 12 just a half so over here what do we see <laughs> bachcha whoever is doing this please stop it please stop it okay and then this option is correct so the answer goes with c all right so this is the option that we go ahead with and this is how you sieve or filter the information now going ahead with the next question this was the question uh, ya shipra you want to ask something you can just text it you can just text it i'll go ahead with your chat uh okay not a problem even if you people are like you know if uh, cyan uh, even if people are writing chat it doesn't bother me what bothers me is when people start playing with the screen no one should play with the screen okay uh, so, social security up to 2 years because of any scheme coming up in the recent times yes ayush you need to prepare for 2 years okay but i'll be taking uh, the option okay all right disable the pen option i'll have to check that so i need the pen option because uh, anyone from the admin please disable the pen option for the students because uh, i cannot do it from here as, as at the moment all right let me just focus on the content please and i hope students are aspiring to become bureaucrats you are not like school going or college going kids you have to focus on your precious two hours whereby you get the best out of the teacher rather than creating unnecessary ruckus or unnecessary like you know chaos on the street so you so that you get the best of my insight the best of how i can create the interventions for you and how you absorb everything in totality okay so uh, that will be possible when we both behave like adults and we both focus on the possibility of creating the best out of what it is over here now let's see in context of any country which one of the following would be considered as social capital now how confusion gets created we'll focus on that part it is saying the proportion of literates in the population now the thing is the moment i accept the possibility that social capital is associated with literates i will deny the possibility of social capital associated with like let us say people who are not associated with educated jobs or professional jobs means like let us say someone is laying down the wire or laying down the road or someone is uh, working in a brick kiln or someone is working as a household staff any person as such i will not be encouraging or i will not be connecting that person with the concept of social capital and that will be a very incorrect aspect if we think like that or if we connect like that so the thing is can we connect the concept of social capital with only literate population one doubt 
so this is how you see you see the you filter the questions okay whenever you see the prelims questions then it is saying the stock of its buildings now is social capital the word social associated with like inanimate objects like infrastructure and machines definitely no so ye dekhte hi koi bhi chhad dega ki nahi ye to bilkul galat hai then you are seeing the c option the size of population the working age group what if the age is there but the person is not working then also the problem can be created right so again this is raising our bro and it is suggesting that no it is incorrect then it comes the level of mutual trust and harmony in the society because we are talking about social capital and what is social capital is this associated with the possibility of the dynamics whereby diversity is respected cooperation is respected everyone is supporting everyone everyone is like you know moving ahead by uh, like let's say supporting the other person um, like let's say creating opportunities for the other person creating a level playing field for the other person if someone is lagging behind pulling that person ahead right so when we are talking about this solidarity this mutuality that is something which leads to social capital even if people are literates but they are criminals they will not create social capital right so there are always lacunas in every question so whenever you read the language thoroughly you can always see if that this is creating the doubt and there concepts are required so in the first question we saw the 2017 issue or a 2017 act qualified as a question and in the second question we are seeing that a theoretical question okay qualified as a prelims question right so two types of questions we can see in the year 2019 itself just to give you a brief view there were many more questions but just to give you an idea this is how questions are created the very issue of social capital in other terms was asked even in 2018 so i chose that question like let us see this one it is talking about human capital formation and it is saying that human capital formation when we are talking about this concept okay then this concept of human capital formation it is associated with or it is enabled by what first is individuals of a country to accumulate more capital capital is associated here with wealth or monetary gains or it can be infrastructural aspects so when individuals accumulate more capital and here capital primarily is associated with the monetary aspect then it is saying the second segment increasing the knowledge skill levels and capacity of the people of the country so the moment it is saying knowledge skill levels and capacity three terms okay and it is talking about increasing it so formation formation will be associated with increasing and human capital means when human beings are an asset for the country asset for the civilization so human beings will become an asset when they are empowered and how can they be empowered in the long run with knowledge skills and capacities so this is qualifying as the best option then we are seeing accumulation of tangible wealth now this term when we are talking about this tangible wealth and we are uh, going by this again this is creating a problem because what is tangible wealth what do we understand by tangible wealth so that is something which you can feel touch observe see okay it can be a building it can be like let us say this bottle it can be a phone anything then we are talking about intangible wealth intangible means something which can be observed felt okay like let us consider when we are talking about it music the copyright music so that is an in copyright for your tune or copyright for your song or your story so that is an intangible wealth that you possess now the thing is is it talk associated if it was written let me give you an option how this option could have been correct the third, the, the fourth statement if it would have been written that accumulation of intangible skills then it would have been correct जस्ट वेल्थ को रिप्लेस कर देता यहाँ पे स्किल्स लिख देता ये ऑप्शन सही हो जाता और फिर ऑप्शन हो जाता टू एंड फोर लेकिन ये सिर्फ वर्ड वेल्थ जो लिखा है दिस टर्म वेल्थ मेक्स इट इन करेक्ट एंड आंसर गोज विथ बी I hope you can see how the examiner is being very particular in terms of whoever is drawing please don't okay so I hope all of you can see how the examiner is actually सीविंग the question how the examiner is testing your clarity of concept all right now you can see further uh sorry i just jumped the gun so wait i'll just go by the page so you have done this question the explanation i have already explained it so we can just jump straight away then this was a 2018 question pradhan mantri kaushal vikas yojana so a scheme has been asked 
it is saying that it is a flagship scheme of ministry of labor and employment so first are you clear the moment you say kaushal skill development you think oh skill development it can be associated with labor and employment because without skill can there be labor this is tukka marna ekdam simple language or upsc ke prelims mein tukka marna can be fatal if you are not sure of the ministry you are playing a 50 50 chance so when you are going through schemes you should also be clear about the ministries which are handling those schemes hence forth today like uh, not just today but also tomorrow day after i have bifurcated the interventions first i have taken up some issues which are not necessarily related to the ministries but they are in news and other than that related to that topic if there are certain schemes then i have segregated it according to ministries and according to type of interventions which we'll be dealing in a short while so the very first fact is ministry of labor and employment are we aware that ministry of labor and employment is taking care of it then it is among the other things will also impart training of soft skills entrepreneurship financial digital literacy these are the keywords okay now the thing is is for this kaushal vikas now the thing is entrepreneurship financial digital literacy soft skills are all the terms correct what if the words are like let's say soft skills is there entrepreneurship is there financial is not there then what or like let us say entrepreneurship financial and digital is there soft skills is not there so you should be clear about every single term which is introduced in an option if any option goes wrong like let us say soft skills would not have been given though it is there okay if it would not have been given and entrepreneurship financial and digital literacy would have been given or like let's say digital literacy bhi nahi diya hota ye dono nahi diya hota theek hai uh, like in this pradhan mantri kaushal vikas yojana suppose i am saying diya hai first this option is correct you should know that this option is correct but suppose nahi diya hota because we are going through the reverse process okay so soft skills and digital literacy real real mein nahi diya hota it won't have been there in the yojana okay in this specific yojana and what would have been there Entrepreneurship and financial empowerment would be created. ये दिया होता। और आप देखे तो बोलते हाँ soft skill भी तो but obviously देना ही चाहिए literacy देना ही चाहिए और आप लगा देते तो गलत हो जाता। So you should be very clear that every single sub segment introduced in an option should be correct. Like let's say three options are correct, one is incorrect, the entire option goes wrong. It doesn't matter even if two or three options are correct. That is how confusion is created. Anyway, presently this is correct as I have shared this. Okay. now going by this to uh, it aims to align the competencies of unregulated workforce the moment we say unregulated workforce of the country in uh, to the national skill qualifications framework the moment i am talking about this very possibility we all understand that this is associated with a specific body that is national skill qualification framework and that should be associated second unregulated workforce means unskilled population should Also be associated with social vikas, so that is perceivable that social vikas is means skill development is unregulated workforce. So, will happen, right? As a, your subconscious may work. Can work. Now, going back to the option, the moment we explore the option, we see that the answer is C. Definitely, the unregulated workforce and all the four options that were discussed over there are correct. Okay. So, what we find is this option was correct. As I had said, this is also correct because it is a part of this and this as well. So, the answer was this. this is how the questions are created and this is how on confusion is created for all of you so i hope by these questions all of you have gained a clarity that how questions are created so when i would be discussing in a similar framework you will be understand the relevance that what i am teaching is very much pro exam which is very much pro prelims first thing second thing when i'll be explaining all of this i have just given you a brief overview of the questions how the questions are created when i start discussing the possibilities associated with this i actually aspire that all of you not only use these techniques in social issues but you also use it for economic schemes you use it when you are something studying something related to polity something related to internal security use this methodology of studying seeing and interpreting in all your other subjects as well because this is not exclusive to one discipline only now moving ahead further so first and foremost because most of the students don't understand the difference between a central sector scheme and a centrally sponsored scheme i thought this is a brief theoretical aspect let me clarify this and then move ahead with the 
today's topic that is health i want to take up health because we all are concerned about the uh, very possibility and the dynamics that has changed the world changed our life our reality so i want to open the dynamics of health after this okay so first let's understand the difference between the two when we say central sector scheme mind it when we are saying you should not write down css right now okay when we say central sector scheme and centrally sponsored scheme remember whenever the government is using or any intellectual is using this word css is always or majority of the times it is used for centrally sponsored scheme even in the government document and government data but there are two types of css that is if we are using the abbreviation casually one is central sector scheme and second is centrally sponsored scheme what is the difference so the moment it is central sector means the entire segment is taken care of by union government means 100% central government sponsor okay the state government is not sponsoring or bearing even 1% of the burden of that specific scheme means the government the central government is taking command of the entire game then there is the central sector schemes mainly formulated on the subjects of union list so another key factor is the union list okay when we are seeing central sector scheme they account for 11% of the central government's expenditure okay so whatever the government is going to spend in a specific year the whatever the budgetary allocations are made in the expenses 11% is associated with central sector schemes and it is a part of union list it is not a part of state list or concurrent list anyway moving ahead further when we see centrally sponsored scheme you are seeing the word sponsored now a certain percentage is borne by what the state governments as i had shared with you then centrally sponsored schemes when we are talking about them they are associated with state list so let us say you can see state government is bearing the expenditure state list is covering also so it is covered under state list we can also see that uh, when we are talking about the possibilities related to it there are 10% of central government's expenditure means the central sector schemes are taking more percentage just a mar marginal difference but still it is in multi crores so it is 11% and this is taking almost 10% then centrally sponsored schemes they are revisited at the end of so revisiting means you can always recreate you can rename for example when i am talking about like let's say nirmal bharat abhiyan so the nirmal bharat abhiyan was a centrally sponsored scheme which was further revisited after the five year plan and then they thought that despite having this centrally sponsored scheme we are unable to achieve the target of sanitation so what did the government do it further reframed the objectives it revised the uh, the objectives of it and it created a new name and that was called i hope all of you know swachh bharat abhiyan initially when it was taken up under as a flagship program and then later on it was converted into uh, this uh, swachh bharat mission there is a difference between the two and you you should be aware or posted about it as well we will be taking the issue of sanitation later okay then we can see this uh, that it is uh, revisited in the end of each five year plan okay so after every 5 years uh, the, when we are talking about a centrally sponsored scheme we see that it is revisited and it is again revised or certain facts are added certain dimensions are added sometimes they are also discontinued means they are not continued further and we all can see that uh, there is a sunset date sunset date means when that scheme shall be over for example you might be knowing that swachh bharat mission when we are talking about it the end date was 2nd october 2019 and because it was just last year this year many questions could have qualified related to sanitation and swachh bharat abhiyan and mission that whether we were successful in achieving the targets and objectives or not anyway so this is a sunset date will be code terminus with the financial commission cycle so whenever the like let us say the five year cycle is going to complete generally the sunset date is merged somewhere closer to it this is the time period when it shall be completed then you can see the centrally sponsored schemes have a sunset clause except mgreg this is an important fact which all of you should know that mgreg is going to continue it does not have any end date that this is the time when it should be over why because it is an act and an act is a law and a law doesn't get over that's the logic so it is though it is a centrally sponsored scheme but despite being a scheme if you remember initially it was mgregs and that s became an a so a scheme became an act and because it is a law that's why it can never be 
finished. It, it doesn't have an end date or a sunset date. I hope you are understanding this logic. So as I had shared, I'll be starting with the topic of like, let us say health. So that is why what I aspire to do. So before we take up the World Drug Day, in the dimension of health, most of you who have been old students might be able to recall and uh, the ones who are new should be able to connect with this aspect, which I'm going to share right now. That is, whenever we are dealing with the chapter of health, there are two segments. One is preventive and second is curative. In the preventive segment, we go ahead with how to prevent the affliction of a disease or how to safeguard ourselves from falling ill or any kind of mortality rate taking place. So in preventive care, we come up with vaccination, we come up with all immunization drives, we come up with good nutrition, we come up with getting rid of hunger, we come up with the possibility of sanitation, keeping the environment clean, we come up with the possibility of keeping the environment pollution free. We also come up with the dimension of Ayush, whereby we are focusing on yoga, or we are focusing on all wellness and uh, like healthcare initiatives by which we improve our immunity, right? Similarly, when we are talking about curative dimension, under curative, you take up all the interventions which helps to cure the disease by which a person has already been afflicted. The disease can be like, uh, like non-communicable diseases or it can be communicable diseases. And when we are talking about communicable and non-communicable diseases, there is also interventions which are carried forward in terms of research, which is clinical trials, whereby we take the, we test the efficacy of a drug, whether that uh, the drug is efficacious and there is a, uh, a positive impact on the health of an individual, right? So when we are talking about the possibility of curative segment in terms of clinical trial, there is uh, information sharing or data sharing with science and technology because it's uh, science and technology. You have the component of biotechnology and there you will study the scientific aspects. Here we'll study the human aspects, the social aspects, the dynamics related to the, uh, the vulnerability of a given population, okay, which is exposed to a disease. Simultaneously, there can be issues of organ donation. There can be issues related to drugs. There can be issues like related to Ayush as well, because a person may fall ill and try to get cured through homeopathy or allopathy or Ayurveda or Yunani or Siddha methods as well. Okay. So, the chapter of health is actually related to multiple ministries also, right? You will see that the Ministry of Rural Development is associated with it, urban development is associated with it, social justice is associated with it, okay? Uh, the, the, the department of uh, providing a safe and clean drinking water is associated with it. So multiple departments and ministries are associated with this chapter of health. Even you, you can see Ministry of Agriculture is associated with it when we are talking about availability of food grains. So multiple ministries are associated with this chapter of health. Henceforth, I'll be taking up the intervention of multiple ministries, which are taking up multidimensional interventions. And there I'll help you to understand how confusions are created. So let us start with the first topic, which is World Drug Day. It means it is an international issue, which is associated with the social issue. So when we are talking about the World Drug Day, I'm very sure that many of you, rather than listening to what I'm talking, might be busy reading it and finishing it. Don't do that. You can read the screenshot and read it. And if you can understand it, you can read Focus on what I'm talking because the lecture is more importantly associated with what I explain and not the facts. Facts is readily available as I've shared earlier. So throughout the lecture, focus on what the teacher is saying rather than what is printed. Printed pe to dodenge, pen bhi chalega, explanation bhi chalega, right? Okay, so let us start. So when this, international drug day against drug abuse and illicit trafficking is celebrated annually on 26 June. Ab, I should remember 26 June because four facts to have one fact to give June. Now suppose you remember June, June, but you forgot 26. Do it not factual, it's not dry push on an average. But sometimes in combination questions where they give you code questions, sometimes one silly aspect can be created like this. First thing is the date. Okay, but most important is the theme. Most of the times, the UPSC, when it creates a combination of options, it doesn't really focus on date or give an option of date. Sometimes it gives the option of month. World Drug Day is celebrated in the month of and given July or something like April. Okay, so that is the level of confusion it creates. Generally, it doesn't fool around with the numbers. I got to state commission may helpful over, right? 
यू शुड ऑलवेज रिमेंबर द थीम थीम जरूर पूछता है सो यू शुड रिमेंबर द थीम ओके सो वट इज द थीम बेटर नॉलेज फॉर बेटर केयर नॉ दिस डायमेंशन नॉलेज रिलेटेड टू ड्रग अब्यूज दिस इज समथिंग विच इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग सपोज इसका थीम मैं क्रिएट कर देती ड्रग फ्री वर्ल्ड हेल्थी वर्ल्ड कोई भी कंफ्यूज हो जाता है ना तो पता होना चाहिए कि इस बार का फोकस क्या था सो थीम यू शुड ऑलवेज रिमेंबर एंड रिमेंबर द स्पिरिट ऑफ द थीम एंड कनेक्टेड विद समथिंग विच हेल्प यू टू हैव अ बेटर मेमोरी रिलेटेड टू इट नाउ वट आर द फोकस एरिया सो इट इज सेंग इंप्रूविंग द नॉलेज है तो नॉलेज से बेटर नॉलेज अपने आप परसिवेबल है इसमें कोर एरियाज क्या कंफ्यूजन मेरे लिए क्रिएट कर सकता है एज अ स्टूडेंट यू हैव टू थिंक लाइक दैट सो द थिंग इज सेंग ग्रेटर इंटरनेशनल कोऑपरेशन फाइन इट इज वर्ल्ड ड्रग डे सो इंटरनेशनल कोऑपरेशन इज इनएविटेबल इन टर्म्स ऑफ हेल्थ but governance and security two important segments which you should not forget because governance and security you may not think is associated with world drug day but considering the drug cartel and the drug trafficking and you have seen like abhi to most of you are at home so you might be watching tv series like breaking bad and all you might be exposed to so many drug cartel or narcos etc right i have not watched narcos but still i mean um, when you are exposed to these uh possibilities you are aware that this is an issue of governance and security also okay and this has been incorporated this has been acknowledged then it is saying drug abuse cocaine hallucinogens then cannabis opiates ye sab sabko pata hoga lekin prescription medication bhi drug abuse mein aata hai ye pata hona chahiye for example aapko pata hoga people sometimes specifically in punjab and all you will find that when there is a dry day people go and purchase cough syrup and they drink an entire cough syrup why usme alcohol hota hai sedation ka kaam karta hai to prescription medicines okay such as pain killers sleeping pill theek hai aapne suna hoga people like uh, some drug addicts they take iodex and they have it with bread right all that so sometimes medication is also used as drug abuse you understand the word abuse misuse abuse means it is not used for the purpose with the right quantity the way it should be means it is used exploitatively or harmfully okay now the population you can see 35.6 million theek hai fine one out of eight means not every person needs a treatment but one out of eight needs a treatment and interestingly women one third victims are women means out of every three drug abuse victims one is woman two are men that's the proportion okay 71% death in last decade this is very important ye confuse kar sakta hai kisi ko bhi in last decade means in past 10 years 71% death that has occurred is somewhere associated with drugs or related disorder what is related disorder aap sharab pee rahe the and because you were drinking and you were into alcoholism finally your like let's say kidney stopped functioning or your liver cirrhosis hua liver phat gaya mar gaye theek hai all that so there is a related disorder okay so drugs or related disorder this 71% death pichle 10 saal mein hua isme ministry kaun sa involved hai so dekho kitne sare ministries hain health and family welfare ministry of social justice and empowerment this is the second ministry and then there are programs also like you can see de addiction program then demand reduction policies these are the interventions which the government of india no this is exclusive to india okay so you need to understand this aspect as well okay now getting to the very segment of health and in health i'm first and foremost taking up covid some interesting facts i have assimilated for all of you first and foremost all of you know that needn't inform you there is no vaccine as of now today right but there are a lot of players who are in the market who are working towards it creation of the vaccine right and but always remember maybe most of you are not posted about it mass manufacturing though the government of india abhi just oxford ke scholar ne kaha ki india mein mass manufacturing agar hua so that will be the biggest or the greatest intervention which a person would be taking up that will be the greatest like let us say intervention that a person will take up related to the production of um, the government will be taking up related to the production of the covid drugs right prior to this the government indian government has never seen such an unprecedented challenge of producing so much of drugs so you should be aware of this thing mass manufacturing india ke liye sabse bada challenge hai aur ye kab hona hai before 2020 2023 okay isse pehle nahi hoga matlab if you are at home mentally prepare yourself that for at least another 9 months to 1 year life is not majorly going to change even if uh, like let's say a drug is introduced a vaccine is introduced its efficaciousness 
its availability is going to be a very big challenge. Maybe the first batch I use, maybe all of us can get repercussions. Bhi pata chale. So, vaccine is not like that. One has to wait and actually check. Okay. Another thing is that uh, clinical trial ke kis stage mein wo hai. We'll talk about that just in a short time. Let's focus here. So 2022, maybe 2023. Anyway, I'll get back to this 2023 issue. On an average, the possibility of creating a vaccine, the global average has been 10.7 years. Any good vaccine takes 10.7 years to get produced because the entire world has pulled its energy, pulled its money, pulled its muscle, pulled its like, let's say, social capital in the production of the vaccine, it is presumed, it is considered that soon a new, like let's say vaccine will be manufactured. But the question is, the, its availability at mass level will be challenging. So prepare yourself well, safeguard yourself well, and then let's move ahead. Then you can see there are some emerging antiviral drugs, fine. Hydrochloroquine, that was very much talked about when uh, Mr. Trump uh, talked about and pressurized India to provide it. Okay, it is not proven for COVID. It just helps to, like, let us say, minimize. It helps to minimize the infection. All right, but we all can see that despite the fact that it helps to minimize the infection, the hydrochloroquine is not associated with. It is not uh, like uh, majorly uh, curing the disease. Only in the initial stages, it can control the viral infection. Then you can see plasma transplant is experimental, not proven. Hai na? Ye plasma transplant is not proven. Nahi hai, lekin ispe kaam chal raha. Just abhi din pehle news mein aaya tha, that in Mumbai, uh, if not din, at least one week, lekin isse purana nahi hai. Mumbai mein ek plasma bank ban raha hai. You should know that. Okay? Mumbai mein first plasma bank ban raha hai, jahan pe there will be like, you know, this... Uh, plasma transplant will be facilitated. So the government has started working on it. Anyway, alcohol does not kill virus. Many people were talking about it. Yacha sanitizer, 70% alcohol, alcohol feeling, body se bhi Stupidity, sheer stupidity, no. Immunity, par kaam kariye, raat raat bane ki nahi. Or agar raat bar mein aapki immunity nahi tayar ho rahi hai, if you are getting infected, you cannot fight it. The better the immunity, the better the possibility, higher the possibility for you to fight back. Then you can see when we are talking about it, irradiation with ultraviolet rays, uh, ultraviolet rays is dangerous. Now, irradiation with UV rays. Kuch log bale UV rays se ho sakta hai. Aray bhai, UV rays is dangerous even for the human beings. Nine out of ten infected will return home safely. That's the relieving factor. Always remember, any virus is successful, not when it kills the body in which it is, uh, like you know, uh, getting inside. A virus is successful when it is able to spread itself without causing much damage. If host it spread Right? For example, influenza. Okay, a normal common cold. Common cold is not going to disturb You cannot study, you cannot do anything, you feel lethargic, body ache. And people are like, sir, this is not going to be done. But we all know whenever that happens, how like, uh, irritating it is and how unwell a person feels. Right? So please understand, just like that, any virus will be successful, considered successful, only when it keeps spreading from the host and it doesn't kill the host. If it's fatal, then it's an unsuccessful virus in medical uh, terminology. Okay? So anyway, getting back to this, there is no proof of permanent immunity post-recovery. Yes, people who have been infected, one month of infection, two months of and then people are like, they are unable to get their sense of smell back or taste back. Not everyone, but few patients have reported that. So different people, someone is experiencing memory loss, someone is experiencing kidney failure, someone is experiencing some stress on the liver. So whatever part body may disturb hota hai, wo part damage hota hai ya wo part affected hota hai. So immunity, complete well-being and immunity is necessary. Okay, so get into some yoga exercise, do something to improve it. Anyway, moving ahead further as we are moving with this COVID issue, let us see a few other facts, you know, just to safeguard you from dictation. I created this. I just like, you know, created the entire sheet. All of you, meanwhile, what you can do while I'm explaining it, as I keep underlining and highlighting, you can keep taking screenshots also so that you can revise after the class. A quick revision, ek bar sun liya, samaj liya, ek bar isko dekh liya. 
वेन यू डू दिस डबल मेथड आफ्टर द क्लास टू आवर्स का क्लास क्या है आप लोग को सामने बैठती थी तीन तीन घंटे पढ़ा देती थी है ना सो यू आर हैबिचुएटेड फॉर थ्री आवर्स इनफैक्ट अ जेनुइन यूपीएससी एस्पेरेंट स्टडीज फॉर लाइक ऑलमोस्ट एट टू टेन आवर्स दैट इज हाउ वन शुड स्टडी so three hours is no big deal after two hours just take a like let's say a bathroom break or a like you know water break and sit and just quickly revise all the slides okay do so okay that will be helpful for you we'll try to upload this on youtube as well so that even if you have missed the initial slides you can take a screenshot from there as well but just revise it quickly and don't procrastinate it ye mat sochna hai kal aayenge kal kal nahi isko aaj hi kar lena so that tomorrow when i take up new issues you are updated about it all right getting back to it रिपोर्ट्स रिलेटेड टू कोविड 19 पहले इंटरनेशनल उठाएंगे फिर गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया का इंटरवेंशन उठाएंगे ठीक है सो फर्स्ट इज दिस कोविड 19 व्हाट ग्लोबली वी आर सीइंग देयर इज दिस रिपोर्ट शेयर्ड रिस्पांसिबिलिटी आ रही है सॉरी मेरी गलती ओके सो शेयर्ड रिस्पांसिबिलिटी ग्लोबल सॉलिडारिटी दिस इज द नेम ऑफ द रिपोर्ट रिस्पोंडिंग टू द सोशियो इकोनॉमिक्स ऑफ कोविड 19 अब इसमें ये चीज याद रखना कीवर्ड्स जो नहीं भूलना चाहिए एक है शेयर्ड रिस्पांसिबिलिटी ग्लोबल सॉलिडारिटी रिस्पांसिबिलिटी शेयर हो जाए Or solidarity, global level. First thing. Second thing. Most important impact will be socio-economic. So the uh, UN is also focusing on what the socio-economic impact, right? So you should just remember this shared responsibility, global solidarity. Keywords. These are first thing. Report. Ka. Second thing which you can see a new multi-donor trust fund will be created. ठीक है और ये किसके लिए जैसे African countries हो गया सब सहारन African countries, third world countries, okay, which are experiencing a very high population and they are not capable to support themselves financially or help themselves recover from this disease, okay. So response and recovery to support low and middle income countries, ठीक है तो मैंने जो आपको कहा था third world countries जो हैं उनको support करने का. Then it is saying the fund will complement with WHO. तो WHO का क्या है strategic preparedness and response plan. ठीक है दिस इज अनदर थिंग सो ग्लोबली डब्ल्यू एच ओ इज ऑल्सो इंटीग्रेटेड विद दिस यूनाइटेड नेशन अप्रोच अलॉन्ग विथ ओ सी एच ए वॉट इज ओ सी एच ए यूनाइटेड नेशन का जो ऑफिस है ना सो ऑफिस फॉर कोऑर्डिनेशन ऑफ ह्यूमैनिटेरियन अफेयर्स इट इज कोऑपरेटिंग अलॉन्ग विथ डब्ल्यू एच ओज प्लान सो दैट वी आर एबल टू लाइक यू नो कॉम्पोजिटली टूगेदर अड्रेस द चैलेंज देन इट इज सेइंग द फंड हैज थ्री एम्स अब यहां पर कौन सा भाई तीन एम है ये देखेंगे तीन विंडोज के साथ खुलेगा सो द फाइनेंस विंडो ओके फॉर ईच वन स्टॉप ट्रांसमिशन ऑफ वायरस तो सबसे पहला है पैसा रहेगा तो आप इसको एड्रेस कर सकेंगे ट्रांसमिशन को कंट्रोल कर सकेंगे ओके सो फाइनेंस इज देयर टू स्टॉप ट्रांसमिशन एंड देन मोस्ट वॉलरेबल को क्या करेंगे भाई पैसा देंगे सोशियो इकोनॉमिक सिक्योरिटी एंड गारंटी देंगे और इसके रिजिलियंट अप्रोच रखेंगे फ्यूचर हेल्थ क्राइसिस के लिए फ्यूचर में ऐसा कोई मेजर आउटबर्स ना हो ओके अभी हम लोग सुने ही थे कि चाइना में अभी जस्ट अभी स्वाइन फ्लू का एक नया स्ट्रेन मिला विच इज एज लाइक डेडली एज दिस कोविड राइट वी जस्ट रेड अबाउट इट अ मंथ बैक एंड एवरी वन वॉट स्केड अरे भाई ये सब तुम खाना बंद करो जो भी चीज रेंग रहा है चल रहा है मूव कर रहा है उसको तुम खा जा रहे हो मत करो ये काम द वर्ल्ड स्टार्ट टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट थिंग राइट सो इट्स नॉट जस्ट अबाउट द थिंग दैट पीपल आर कंज्यूमिंग इट इज ऑल्सो एसोसिएटेड विद द क्राइसिस इज दैट पीपल आर एक्सपोज टू समझ में आ रहा है सबको ठीक है तो फ्यूचर का भी इसमें डायमेंशन है ट्रांसमिशन रोको जो पीछे छूट रहा है उसको पकड़ो उसको संभालो और फ्यूचर में होने मत दो एनी वे तीन विंडोज है इसके ग्लोबल लेवल पे जो हम लोग खोल रहे हैं जिसपे वर्कआउट कर रहे हैं सो वट आर द्री विंडोज फर्स्ट इज एनेबल गवर्नमेंट एंड कम्युनिटीज टू टैकल इमरजेंसी सपोर्ट दैट इज यहाँ पे सिर्फ सॉरी आई एम सो सॉरी इसमें एन ए पी एच एस बस इसको इतना याद रखना नेशनल एक्शन प्लान फॉर हेल्थ सिक्योरिटी मीन्स हर कंट्री को तुम एन उसका एनेबल करो स्ट्रेंथन करो दैट इज नेशनल एक्शन प्लान स्ट्रेंथन करो हर कंट्री का सो द कंट्री इज केपेबल टू हैंडल इट्स ओन इंडिविजुअल क्राइसिस फर्स्ट थिंग सेकंड थिंग क्या करना है इसमें कैश ट्रांसफर करो इकोनॉमिकली एम्पावर करो बिकॉज पैसा नहीं होगा तो एक इंसान अपना हेल्थ केयर न्यूट्रिशन के टर्म्स में इम्यूनिटी के टर्म्स में या अगर डिजीज हो गया तो ठीक करने के टर्म्स में ध्यान ही नहीं रख पाएगा सो इफ अ पर्सन वोट बी एबल टू टेक केयर ऑफ हिज हेल्थ इन टर्म्स ऑफ मेडिकल इंटरवेंशन न्यूट्रिशन और इम्यूनिटी दैट विल ऑल्सो क्रिएट अ problem right so just to not get jeopardized in that dimension we see there is an intervention related to cash transfer and food security and what is the third window that is recover better and how will we recover better so we all can see that that is associated with how prepared we are means for example in delhi the delhi government it created a lot of hospital beds today just today the latest news is out of 
12,000 beds, 8,000 beds have been vacated. A lot of oxygen cylinders are not now not in use because people are getting recovered. Half the patients are home quarantined and they are also recovering. So the recovery rate is very fast of Delhi, right? So preparedness. If you have a patient, you have a bed that you have to keep it in the bed. So national level ka preparedness. So third window, United Nations create in every country. Mein. Okay? And that will be related to what? Key services, for example, masks, cylinders, oxygen cylinders, beds, PPE kits, etc. These are key services, services along with the kits, along with the infrastructure. And workforce, workforce during rice means that workforce means the nurses, the doctors, they are given enough rest, they are given enough space, they are given enough salary. And the labs are also functional. The laboratories are conducting the research properly. I hope all of you are understanding these keywords, right? And you're seeing how I'm segregating minimal underlining. So keep thinking on that aspect. Anyway, moving ahead. So what I have discussed till now, just abbreviating it, that Corona vaccine before August 15 is impossible. Right. So it was stated that August 15, that we will launch Corona ka vaccine, ko vaccine jo hai, usko launch kar denge. Well, it is impossible. This is what experts are saying. Okay. There is a ye jo diagram dikh raha hai na, pe ye wala. Isko bhi zoom karke niche kiya. So I'll just show it to you. This is the diagram. Stages in the development of the vaccine. Isko briefly bata dekhiyo, because science and tech mein ye zada kam aayega. This is less associated with my area, more associated with the technical aspect or the scientific aspect. So I'll just briefly run through it so that it's not that I completely left it, okay? But the details, if you want to read it, you get umpteen number of articles associated with it, okay? So as we are, uh, okay, Satya Shalini, I'll take care of that, all right? So in between, I'm just switching it because there are students from rural backgrounds as well, all right? So that is why sometimes just to create a, a comfort level, it's uh, done. One more thing. When we keep like, you know, listening to something non-stop in a monotonous fashion, in a specific one language, without any jokes, there's no scope of improvising jokes. I could have done that if it would have been a casual lecture or it would, would have been a general lecture. It's an airtight lecture. So I don't have the space to create uh, like, you know, little puns in between. Sometimes I do that, like I, I try to do it with the TV series and all that. But the thing is, that's not there. And the lecture should not become dry because prelims and especially related to the schemes and interventions and all that, sometimes it is loaded with dry facts. So just to break the dryness, Satya, sometimes I'm speaking few words of Hindi because that just makes the person alert. Are you getting it? And if a person is sinking or becoming slow, the person just recharges. All right. So anyway, getting back to this. So the thing is stages in vaccine development. This is one thing, but I'll discuss the stages first after discussing this dimension of Corona vaccine tracker. So as we are discussing, oh, okay, all right, got it. Uh, understood, you're from Tamil Nadu. I understand that language must be creating a barrier, but it's, it, I hope you understand the intention also so that uh, like a person doesn't just uh, like, you know, collapse or feel sleepy. Now, getting back to this. So when we are talking about this Corona vaccine tracker, this is latest information, July 11th. This information was updated, as you can see. So at preclinical level, more than 150 players are working. In fact, you can see 155 players are working at preclinical level. When we are talking about the phase one level, then in phase one, 14 vaccines are there. In phase two, there are 11 vaccines that are there. In phase three, there are four vaccines that are there. And in terms of approval, one is there. It is approved for limited use because still people are checking the efficacy of it and the side effects of it. It is still worked out. I hope you know that that is the Oxford vaccine. I'll be discussing about it just in a short while. But prior to that, let us just see the dimensions that what is done. So what happens in phase one? What happens in phase two, three, four accordingly? Okay. If you Google this article, Corona vax, Coronavirus Vaccine Tracker, you'll get the entire article. You can read it from there as well. 
Here, I'm just giving you an insight related to the stages of development. So at the exploratory stage or the first very dimension, we see that the R&D is involved and antigens are used to treat the diseases. Then second is the preclinical stage. At this stage, you start testing it on animals and you start testing it at the cellular level. The cellular cultures are tested. At the third thing, you see that the clinical uh, tests, uh, like, you know, they can take seven to 10 years, as I had said that, and uh, this phase becomes too exhaustive. So the first phase is associated with toxicity, means whether the vaccine will cause any uh, major damage or it will be fatal or it can cause any kind of like, let's say, a repercussion in the patient. So that is something which is observed. Then you can see the second dimension. It is related to the second phase. I'm so sorry, just a second. The second phase, we all can see it is given to people who have characteristics such as age and physical health. It's similar to those whom with the new uh, the new vaccine is intended means suppose a 60 percent 60 year old man is suffering so a, pe a person who is 59 year old or 58 year old that volunteer will be tested with that vaccine suppose like let's say 15 year old child is suffering so 17 or 18 year old child will be tested because there is also like you know in clinical trials there is also an age uh, group on which clinic this clinical trial can be uh, like uh, conducted that is from 17 years to 60 years 59 years to be specific so according to the age according to the physical health status the second phase is conducted as you all can see okay then you can see the third phase the third phase is associated with large number of people when the masses are tested okay so this had happened few years back uh, related to Bird flu ka jo vaccine aaya tha, usme bhi kiya tha. In Ames ke pas mein, there's an, another hospital, government hospital, uh, Safdar Jung, in which uh, that uh, this uh, large number of people were tested uh, under this uh, third stage of the clinical trial for bird flu. I remember that uh, because one of my friends became a part of it. So that is. Then fourth is the regulatory review and the approval. Fifth is the manufacturing level. And the sixth is the quality control. That the quality is efficacious and that is how it is delivered. So what is being suggested, you can see that combine the phase one and phase two, because presently phase one is of 28 days and they are saying that reduce it to 14 days. Okay. So 12, ko, 28 days ko half kar do, usko 14 days kar do. Okay. And then start the phase two means club phase one and phase two. This is what people are suggesting so that the vaccine is prepared as soon as possible so that it is available as soon as possible. Anyway, moving ahead. So when we are in this race of finding the COVID-19 vaccine, all of us, when we are struggling to find it, whether we will be, I'm so sorry, whether we'll be able to find it or not, that is a question which the entire world is struggling with. But as I told you, that 10.7 years is an average rate at which vaccines are generally developed. Anyway, getting back to the latest one, that is the Oxford vaccine. I'm just like, you know, Switching it very quickly. Okay, so this Oxford vaccine, which is much in news, all of you know about it. So the AstraZeneca, which is the economic level, if you are following the news, follow the news, then AstraZeneca is the company you should remember. Is per prelims may question a sakta hai. Question can come related to this in prelims. Okay, so remember the company because the share price of this company that just skyrocketed few days back. So you should be aware of this. Okay, and it involves roughly thousand people on whom preliminary trials is going on so what is done the adenovirus remember this is another key fact adenovirus is taken from the chimps then the SARS-CoV-2 spike is done okay so we all can see that uh, the SARS-CoV-2 uh, protein gene is uh, like you know it is spiked as in it is introduced in the protein gene and it is seen that what kind of impact is there then it is put inside the adenovirus this is another key term that you should remember that what is the step so remember the step it is given in great detail in this article. You can just Google this article after taking a screenshot of this. Okay. This is how the Oxford vaccine works. Okay. Step one, two, three, four. Remember, it is a double, it is considered that uh, this is uh, going to create a double bond. It's going to, it, it, it's going to create, a, it's a novel vaccine. And what is a novel vaccine? This is a key term. Again, iske mein prepare kar lana, science and tech mein. what is a novel vaccine? When is a vaccine called a novel vaccine? This is also a technical term. It can qualify as a prelims question. Okay. Uh, and uh, then you can see this uh, segment which is written over here that uh, 
this uh, the vaccine what is done so it is put inside uh, the the adenovirus it is put uh, means uh, adenovirus is taken the sars cov uh, is put in the protein gene then it is put inside the adenovirus then it is further put inside the vaccine in a weakened form weakened form means relatively less impact can be created the way i hope all of you know how polio vaccine works right so in a very weakened form the virus is there Uh, so that uh, a person doesn't get infected and that is how in 2017 though who had declared india to be polio free india polio free ho chuka tha 2017 mein fir kya hua in 2018 we came up with another case which was associated with the vaccine induced polio right so the the vaccine rather than uh, helping the child it uh, like just fired back it happens in rarest of the rare cases but it does happen and you should be posted about it when does it happen what's the time when it can happen so that happens when all of you will realize this when a child is really ill suppose a child is suffering from fever or is having cough cold whatever the mother is not posted she goes to the anganwadi center to give the child like let's say polio drops and like let's say the child is uh, having a low immunity and like let's say the staff is talking over the phone did not pay attention that the child she did not ask that uh, is the child okay for past one week the child was not having loose motions dysentery diarrhea fever anything if she forgets to ask and the mother is also not educated enough and if the vaccine is introduced in such a case the vaccine can backfire okay and in such a case rather than polio ka bhi hoga nahi us bachche ko polio ho jayega kyu ho jayega because the the child will be introduced with the uh, through the vaccine the virus will get in, introduced in the body and the body will not be uh, strong enough to develop uh, the antibodies and fight back okay so that is how okay anyway so it's my antigen and antibody both are working that's why it's a novel, novel corona virus go through it for science and technology area this is an important segment you should be updated you should be posted so please go through it now what is the government of india intervention related to this corona so presently in this atmanirbhar bharat you must have heard of this atmanirbhar bharat the pm has announced a 20 lakh crore package it is a stimulus package uh, this is the first thing so large scale structural reforms are going to be created so it is going to create self reliance one word which you can see it does not advocate self centric arrangements remember this suppose the examiner wants to conf confuse you will give consider the following options related to atmanirbhar bharat one and it's written like a uh, 20 lakh crore stimulus package is created for large scale structural reforms so like ha ye to hai second point is created like let us say it encourages both self reliance as well as self centric arrangements and the moment you don't pay attention to as well as there you go and the option goes wrong okay so self centric arrangements okay this is not there you should pay attention to this part as well then you can see it has been clearly specified that the idea of self reliance is not about a return to the era of import substitution or isolationism means atmanirbhar is not talking about isolationism means it is not talking about anti globalization okay or globalization as many people call it so it's not talking about anti globalization it is only talking about making us more empowered uh, in terms of our own indigenous products our own indigenous skills our own indigenous people okay so uh, the element uh, so which is essential related to atmanirbhar bharat you should know is that the global supply chains the socio economic resilience remember this word resilience you have to use it even for mains this will be helpful even for mains decentralized localism okay decentralized localism means taking the local products or local services from one area using it over there so focusing more on local i will connect this decentralized localism with one more concept but not right now i'll discuss it towards the end of the last lecture the last day when i'm taking the lecture that is social bubbles social bubbles is also a latest concept and that social bubbles can be created when we are having a decentralized localism okay and that will be not only associated with our own interpersonal relationship but also associated with our economic behavior anyway we'll take that social bubble and when i take it i'll help you recall atmanirbhar bharat there also and the social bubble term was given by new zealand initially so that's a very interconnected global scenario which is actually discussing about it with different terminologies here we are talking about it in terms of 
Atmanirbhar Bharat. Moving ahead. So the question is the Atmanirbhar Bharat versus import substitution. Okay. Versus import substitution. So is it going to actually influence it? So please connect these points related to economy as well. It will help you in the economic aspect. Okay. So the it, it is imposing high import tariffs okay and it is discouraging foreign trade why because of this corona crisis rather than like you know encouraging the other country with its uh, like goods and services its manufacturing and production the government actually wants that there is an import substitution model that is created whereby our own local players specifically I'm not like giving in detail about Atmirbhar Bharat in economic terms. Please consult it in economic terms and update it for your economy area, the, like the economic development aspect when you are updating the prelims module related to economy. Atmirbhar Bharat is related to that also, whereby small scale, scale and medium uh, scale enterprises are encouraged. Okay, so MSMEs are also encouraged, cottage industries are encouraged under this Atmirbhar Bharat. So please empower there as well. Okay, so here Indian entrepreneurship and innovation is basically encouraged, though it is uh, uh, the government is also trying to free it from the bureaucratic hurdle. Getting back to the dimension of Atmanirbhar Bharat in terms of health and education package, what about a package, na, 20 lakh? So, like, what kind of interventions are created? Now, see, here I have started with health and I'll focus only on health just for a brief while because we are discussing Atmanirbhar Bharat. I don't want to leave the education aspect, but I'll treat the chapter of education tomorrow, not today. In terms of health, there are already multiple ministries and multiple interventions that needs to be taken care of. Now, when we are talking about these measures taken for health and education in the package, we can see that in health and education, it is playing a very critical role in terms of human development. This is faffing up, which is helpful for the main answer, but it is not related to... Uh, yeah, it is about import substitution, Dr. Uh, Deepsha. It is related to import substitution. I did not say it is not related. It is related. Okay. Uh, and the government, how will you import the substitution model? You will, you will uh, actually support import substitution when you are actually encouraging your own uh, like players, your own private players, your own local players, isn't it? What does advocated? What does advocate mean? Advocated means supporting. Okay, enhancing, supporting. Uh, so when we are talking about import substitution model, here we are, what are we doing? We are supporting it rather than discouraging it. Okay, so probably you misheard me. Okay, I, I was talking about supporting it, not denying it. So, and you can always cross check. That's why I've kept the content in front of you that whenever you come across any kind of confusion, you can always consult the content, revise it uh, later as well. That's why I said, once the lecture is over, kindly run through the content as well. Okay, so when we are talking about this measures related to health and uh, education, remember, all this can be used in the mains answer writing. This is not related to prelims. Just remember this capacity building is one thing. Reforms and enablers for health sector, nothing required. Moving ahead. It's saying leveraging. I'm so sorry. It's saying that. Yeah, leveraging information technology. So in information technology, the key words you should remember is e-sanjeevani teleconsultation services. One fact you should remember. Then you should remember virtual learning modules like iGOT platform. You should remember this. You should remember Arogya Setu app. Arogya Setu app, everyone will remember. But is Arogya Setu app related to this intervention? Many people will not know that, right? So you should know this, that Arogya Setu, iGOT platform and e-sanjeevani teleconsultation services, okay, these are associated with the capacity building, which are interventions which the government is taking, uh, undertaking, okay, for Atmanirbhar Bharat with that hefty package which it is creating. Then you can see, then it is talking about amendment. Okay, just a second. Okay, is it fine? Zoom in. Uh, just a second. Wait, yeah. All right. Right. So as all of you can see this, that amendment to epidemic diseases, when we are talking about it. Okay. So amendment of epidemic diseases, why did this happen? Remember that uh, few health personnels were attacked in different parts of India. Means uh, they went to do certain tests 
on people and uh, they were attacked remember that then only this act was introduced and this is why that the health workers are not undergoing any kind of harassment means if anyone is beating them threatening them anything of that so sort happens under this act act means this law what happens a cognizable non bailable offense may be aaja and the moment it is cognizable and non bailable you are put behind the bars and you cannot even apply for any bail for it and how long so up to 7 years suppose you have hit or the person is hurt okay in that case 7 years tak aapko band kar sakte the person can put you the, the uh, under law the administration can put you behind the bars for 7 years okay then it is saying additionally it has the provision uh cognizable means you are okay cognizable means dekho do tarah ka offense hote hai cognizable and non cognizable non cognizable it's a legal term basically okay cognizable means it is acknowledging that you are the person who committed the crime under non cognizable offense uh, there are other legal provisions whereby the entire proceeding of okay i mean i'm also a lawyer so if i start talking about it half an hour ishi bhi bolte reh jaungi so please understand when we are talking about cognizable and non cognizable uh, offense it is all about the approach okay so cognizable offense when we are talking about it it is about what kind of approach we are having so here uh, the okay so here we are actually talking about the dimension associated with uh, like let us say the kind of intervention sorry the kind of uh, 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 treatment a person will be getting so the moment you have hit it will not be under the thing that uh, you will be put behind bars and you can apply and you can uh, like undergo the trial procedure the moment you have hit it is proved you are put behind the bars no apply application for bail or like you know no kind of uh, uh, addressal in terms of uh, the interventions that uh, can be done by your lawyer so the very approach of getting the punishment or the penalty will differ even um, the the speediness of the trial will differ anyway additionally it has proved to be uh, provide compensation for injury so if there is any injury the person who has come to pick the uh, patient or um, you know, like let's say pick the person who is suffering from that injury uh, can be picked okay and uh, for that you all can see that um, in the process if the person is hurt like let's say the healthcare staff is hurt the doctor is hurt they will be also provided some uh injury uh, the the compensation suppose the person is hurt in any terms or like let's say the ambulance is broken or any kind of such abuse is done th uh, there is a possibility for it now coming to the education system what kind of intervention is created under this education system in the online education system for covid so india's response towards covid in terms of this intervention is first is 12 new swayam prabha dth channels have been added okay pehle 3 the earlier there were 3 now there are 12 new another segment which you can see is 200 new textbooks added to e pathshala means on online level you can read 200 new textbooks earlier also uh, a lot of ncrts were available in soft copy you might be aware of that now 200 more textbooks have been added so and what else is there so along with textbooks there is audio video periodicals etc all that is also available anyway pm e vidya is there now how questions can be created examiner can create consider the following say, uh, uh, interventions related to uh, covid intervention meant for the education system and then the examiner can give you the option okay so you should remember these options and you should just note them down simultaneously like you know when you are cramming it okay so swayam prabha dth 200 new textbook e pathshala okay after that pm e vidya and these are the keywords that you should remember under pm e vidya there will be, will be this diksha portal in this diksha portal there will be digital content and qr coded energized textbooks for all grades all classes okay then mano darpan as you can see mano darpan man means you understand the functions and then darpan when you are reflect reflecting into it means that is associated with the psychological support which teachers and students and their families need. there are people who undergo depression and depression is not something whereby you are just getting fatal tendencies or where you are not feeling very happy sometimes very happy looking people can also uh, uh, suffer from that glumness and specifically in this covid era where whereby uncertainty has uh, increased a lot 
psychological counseling assistance and help is a must must necessity that is required and interestingly the government is also providing an intervention related to that as well and it's a very brilliant intervention so please do remember this intervention as well this can be asked under the combination like the uh, code questions that there is then there is this national foundational literacy and numeracy mission okay this is uh, to be launched uh, by in uh, 2020 uh, and then this will be associated with learning outcomes till grade 5 by 2025 this is a very important dimension it will be associated with right to education as well the, and this will be helpful for you not only for the prelims but also for the forthcoming mains exam so kindly update it upon anyway getting back to health what i had been discussing so i was discussing about the covid and i was discussing that how covid is a major risk now the question is that covid is not only a risk only for the elderly population but majorly for children but the thing is it's not only risky in terms of infection but also because of the depletion in income it is considered that in the near future the covid crisis even if a child is not infected by uh, covid there is a high chance that children will start suffering from hunger polio measles and all these cases will be likely to uh, they are likely to increase in a country like india okay this is john hopkins bloomberg school of public health that has released this report and it has warned that if third world countries like india because india is amongst the top 10 countries which are at a risk of suffering from hunger polio and measles and children dying due to it recently just two months back there was a report that a lot of children from up bihar and madhya pradesh have already Uh, become child labor they have converted to child labor because the schools are closed mid day meal is not available and due to absence of mid day meal they are working somehow to fix the two meals per day so that they are able to be alive so that is something which is going to uh, highlight the dimension so when we are going to talk about the segments of health we are going to first start with the segment of nutrition availability availability of nutrition food grain uh, and the segments related to malnourishment here first i'll start with the latest report and i'll slowly and steadily move to the last 2 3 years issues which have not been covered in prelims but can qualify as a preliminary question okay so it's not necessary that i'll be only talking about the 2020 issue though the past issues i can if i feel that oh ye to pata hoga or this uh, this is also discussed in the mains class i'll just highlight the topic i'll show you this is the topic take a screenshot i'll move ahead okay so first let us start this is the latest dimension that is the global nutrition report as all of you can see this so global nutrition report 2020 this in this you can see that india among this 88 countries Uh, it, uh, we are just finding that uh, the india's position in these 88 countries is going to be not quite a healthy one means the global nutrition targets that were set up for 2025 india will be one of those countries which will fail to achieve the target it will not be able to achieve its target okay it is a multi stakeholder initiative what is a multi stakeholder initiative okay so the global nutrition targets are multi stakeholder initiative means multiple bodies multiple players are going to intervene or are supposed to intervene to get rid of the dynamics of hunger in a country like india okay so this uh, multi stake uh, uh, multi stakeholder initiative uh, uh, is also associated with one more dimension a lot of bodies will come together to also analyze what kind of impact was experienced for example 2025 global nutrition targets established by world health assembly so the targets which have been placed for 2025 by world health in assembly that will be analyzed okay and that will be analyzed that how the various bodies various governments have come together and worked that means the moment i'm saying multi stakeholder means who is a stakeholder the one who is you know, like intervening and trying to bring a difference okay uh, in hindi it is called hit dharak okay so a person who is actually influenced by it and is participating to make a difference so here who all are the stakeholders we can see government the civil society and the private stakeholders are there. so civil society can be ngo it can be a self help group it can be a voluntary organization okay multiple bodies can be there associated with then we all can see it is saying that it also plays an important role to help hold stakeholders to account the commitments they have made okay fine so 
with this in this report what they are targeting is that they are also going to uh, make them accountable okay so the this account word you just need to remember accountable banane ki baat so what are the targets the targets which sorry just a second the targets that were given we all can just go through it okay so you all can see these uh, 20 25 6 global targets first is 40% reduction in children who are stunted what is stunting stunting means according to your age your height is not up to mark okay so means like let us say a girl who is 18 years of age okay or like here we are talking about children so like let us say a child who is 5 years of age and the child should be like let us consider the uh, 3 and a half feet and the child is 2 and a half feet the child is stunted okay similarly you can see 50% reduction in anemia in women in the of reproductive age in india you a lot of people might be aware of the fact that women undergo uh, like you know the cesarean operation india is the country uh, which experiences highest number of cesarean uh, uh, like uh, um, um, operations while delivery of the baby and one of my doctor friends when i was complaining about it that you guys make so much of money through these cesarean op operations he's like no no there's also a scientific aspect lady which you're not aware of are you aware that women are anemic as like yes is like suppose if we don't conduct cesarean we let the normal process of the baby to be pushed out and women is already anemic she will die due to blood loss so sometimes cesarean becomes a safer option one second you also informed that like you know sometimes we have to before conduction of the cesarean operation some women are so much malnourished specifically anemic that we have to first transfuse blood usko do teen bola unit blood pehle chadhana hota hai and once two three units of blood is given to that patient then only we are able to conduct the operation she is not even able to handle that so that's the condition that is due to anemia that is and that's why in bihar an is officer conducted a very interesting intervention he actually introduced a very cheap intervention uh, cheap in terms of money okay not Uh, in a sarcastic term a cheap intervention whereby he said that uh, 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 like an iron pot okay should be distributed for free to all the women who are pregnant or lactating okay jisko lohe ki kadahi bhi kehte hain so the iron pot in which the vegetables are prepared why because if you cook food in iron utensil the food is iron it, it is nourished with iron it is iron enriched when you are cooking food in an iron utensil so he said that why not create this intervention it was quite successful as well anyway getting back to this so when we are talking about this uh, after this anemia dimension we all can see that there is achieve a 30% reduction in low birth weight okay so children who are born and at the time of their birth they are having lesser weight that is also something which you can connect with and overweight will this problem though it was not earlier in india but in past 15 years overweight children are constantly increasing in fact you will be surprised to know that in urban areas 17% of children in many cities are obese or overweight okay and um, in, in many cities uh, it is as high as 25% again the variation is there in the northwest northern and southern parts of india the number of obese or overweight individuals or children is quite high whereas in the eastern parts it is relatively less anyway getting back further so increase in the rate of exclusive breastfeeding in the first 6 months up to uh, like you know up to at least 50% so the thing is when we are talking with the breastfeeding thing that will also be encouraged under what the global nutrition targets i hope it is getting clear again child wasting all those children who It, the easiest way of remembering the child wasting is like you know in our school we used to call children who are very thin we used to call them mombatti agarbatti matches ki tili okay match stick or candle something like that okay why because they were spindly thin so children who are reedy thin or spindly thin what does that mean the height has increased but the weight is not according to the height okay so when we are talking about the possibility weight and height dynamics okay that is something which is related to wasting and the target was to reduce it by 5% okay next dimension related to the food uh -huh, sorry so next dimension which is which we are targeting related to food is the global report on food crisis and here i'm talking about gnaf that is global network against food crisis it is an international alliance 
which is going to address the root cause okay root cause uh, related to hunger and this is co founded by whom to remember the bodies this is where the questions can come european union food and agricultural organization wfp that is world food program and world humanitarian summit there are four bodies associated with it so just remember this part that there are four bodies uh, which can be asked that uh, what is it all about so it is an international alliance as all of you can see that okay no stunting and uh, wasting are two different things my dear okay uh, whenever we are talking about it stunting and wasting devapriya we all can uh, understand why is this coming in between okay when we are talking about the stunting and wasting please understand that uh, when we talk of just a second there are three things one is yeah one is stunting one is wasting is a pata hai मेंस की क्लास में कवर हो जाता है एनीवे नो प्रॉब्लम आई विल जस्ट एक्सप्लेन इट ब्रीफली अंडर वे दीस आर द थ्री सेगमेंट्स व्हिच आर एन इंपैक्ट ऑफ माल नरिशमेंट इन एनी ह्यूमन बॉडी स्टंटिंग व्हाट हैपेंस द कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ स्टंटिंग इज वेट इज लो अकॉर्डिंग टू द हाइट मींस हाइट बढ़ गया है द चाइल्ड हैज गॉट प्रॉपर हाइट बट वेट इज लो ओके व्हेन वी आर टॉकिंग टॉटी ओके सो उल्टा मैंने बोल दिया quick quick bolne ke chakkar i'm so sorry so in stunting the child is stunted dekho stunted is also a phrasal expression we say that the india's growth rate has stunted economic growth rate has stunted stunted means the the rate of growth has come down okay so stunting means the height the height is less according to the person's age there are three aspects whenever we discuss malnourishment okay let me note this down for all of you people whenever we talk about malnutrition or malnourishment there are three aspects okay one is age second is weight third is height the three permutation combination of age weight and height creates stunting wasting and underweight when we are talking about stunting okay the segments related to stunting which can be associated are height and age means a person's height is not according to the age as i had shared initially that suppose a child is of 3 years of age and a child should be a specific number of centimeters so the child is 10 or 15 centimeters lesser or 5 centimeters lesser than the average height so height is less according to age when we talk of wasting in wasting what happens as i told you mombatti agarbatti candle matchstick all those examples what does that mean the weight is less according to height means height is up to mark the child is having a proper height but weight is too less it seems as if you will blow the wind and the child will fly off okay that is wasting and what is underweight in underweight now you can see what are option what are the two options left height age ho gaya weight height ho gaya so here there will be the dimension of age and weight means according to the according to the age the child's weight will not be up to mark what does that mean that means that the child the according to the child's age the kind of weight that the child should have is not there for example there is an 18 year old girl and she is 5 3 in height and her weight should be like let us consider 50 or 51 kg but the girl who is 18 years of age the average weight of an 18 year old girl which is 51 if she is 41 she is underweight i hope you are understanding that right these are some key terms which should be clear it is associated with the chapter of hunger as well anyway i'm just deleting it right now because it is a uh, little haywire like we just shifted because the core concept was not clear moving ahead to the next dimension so ministry of agriculture and farm welfare farmers welfare remember the name of the ministry and remember this national food security mission ye kis se related a production of food grains please do not get confused with national food security act and national food security mission mission was way back 2007 mein aaya tha it is related to production of food grain national food security is act is related to distribution of food grain so there is a difference between the two okay national food security mission is related to rice wheat pulses coarse grains and cereals and also commercial crops if you are talking about national food security act it is only rice wheat and coarse grains that's it it is not related to pulses it is not related to commercial crops okay 
so this is a topic which is related to agriculture not related to social justice because it's not related to uh, you know, like you know food and nutrition but yes background is related it is kind of connected because if food is not grown you cannot feed the person i thought my students need to know national food security act but they should not get confused between the word act and mission just by the variation of one small word act and mission the very approach the targets the objectives the underlying statements change drastically the answer can be wrong so please be clear between the two in terms of act and mission i hope i'm being fairly clear about it okay so it there are certain details which are given over here related to it you can just go through it later then you can see nash this zero hunger program when we are dealing with this zero hunger program you can see that it was started in 2018 okay it was started in gorakhpur one koraput in odisha and thane in maharashtra these are the three places where it was primarily started okay so you can see in this third point it's written three districts would act can you see this the third point three district would act as model of an integrated approach adopting suitable agricultural horticultural practices now the moment you see zero hunger program there is a fair chance that a child might think that zero hunger program rather than being associated with dekho confusion hota hai kaise students ke dimag mein rather than thinking it to be associated with ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare a child might get confused that it is related to ministry of consumer affairs food and public distribution don't get confused between the two okay because whatever is related to production that will be related to which ministry agriculture and farmers welfare and something which is related to distribution and consumption of food that will be associated with which ministry consumer affairs and food and public distribution i hope i'm being clear about it okay so when we are talking about zero hunger program we all can see that it is related to uh, three bodies icar agricultural research then it is icmr medical research and birac birac is actually ms swaminathan's intervention it is a research uh, like a, it, it, he actually had encouraged the government of india to create this council okay so bio uh, technology industry research assistance council is birac and that is how the swaminathan foundation is also associated with it you might be knowing ms swaminathan he was the Uh, uh, father of green revolution so there are four like three bodies and the fourth is a foundation so icar icmr uh, birac and then swaminathan research foundation ms swaminathan research foundation okay so these are the bodies associated what is it associated with it is associated with farming system for nutrition setting up genetic gardens can you see that genetic gardens means they are talking about genetically modified crops which are enhanced in in their nutritional level okay so here that's why you can see there is germplasm discussed over here in genetic garden or rather the word bio fortified food you might be knowing that um, is very popularly called uh, this uh, go, this uh, golden rice right zinc rich maize uh, iron rich wheat we are talking about all that right so uh, uh, vitamin a enriched rice is the golden rice and all so when we are talking about all of it it is under the zero hunger program means along with removal of hunger malnourishment is also addressed micronutrient deficiency is also addressed so here you can see this word is also given micronutrient deficiency uh, and the dimensions are discussed over here moving ahead further then we see ministry of consumer affairs food and public distribution here we can see national food security act of uh, 2013 and uh, this is something which was much in news earlier i don't see the scope of it being passed i'm being very honest because it has been much in news and the phase has also passed of it being in news so i just brought it in so that national food security mission and act are not confused you are clear one belongs to the ministry of agriculture the other belongs to the ministry of Con this consumer affairs and food distribution you should know few key facts two third of the population is tar targeted whereby 75% is rural 50% is urban you are providing 5 kg food grains per person per month okay and the food grain is provided at 3 rupee 2 rupee 1 rupee 3 rupee rice 2 rupee wheat 1 rupee coarse grain in general also remember when you go to the market whenever you purchase rice is the most expensive one then wheat is lesser expensive and then coarse grains like jowar bajra ragi etc is cheaper so this is why 3 to 1 that segment is there 
then you can see it is an umbrella scheme this act is also an umbrella scheme okay so that's why you can see midday meal icds pds all of them the maternity entitlements all are incorporated under its umbrella okay then you can see that it also takes care of i'm so sorry then you all also can see that it is talking about the subsidy subsidizing the price of the grains 3 to 1 rupees and along with that it is taking care of the msps also that msps are fixed under national food security act msps are fixed people who are beneficiary of antyodaya anna yojana that is 35 kg food grain for one family a bpl family they continue to benefit for it like let us say if there are five members in a family okay and there is 5 kg food grains provided then 5 into 5 25 kg so the bpl family will experience a loss that's why the government said that if there is a bpl family which is a beneficiary of antyodaya anna yojana the bpl family shall continue to be a benefit of antyodaya anna yojana rather than taking the benefit under nfsa national food security act because the person may experience a loss in the amount of food grain delivered to the family okay so antyodaya anna yojana also becomes a part of national food security act okay so uh, along with this you can see that then there are details how pregnant and lactating mothers are helped how like you know children are helped so all do those details are there you can read them later okay and go through the details and don't get confused with any of the details go slow read it properly okay and memorize it well it will be helpful specifically during your mains exam when you are dealing with the chapter of hunger or you are dealing with hunger in social justice my area or you are dealing with uh, food security in economy gs paper 3 mains okay both areas this information will be helpful okay so this antyodaya anna yojana it is under the tpds that is targeted public distribution system it is targeting the poorest sections of the families so sorry fam to poorer sections of the society 35 kg of rice and wheat is given at 3 and 2 rupee per kg coarse grains is at 1 as i have discussed it earlier okay antyodaya anna yojana is a part of national food security act i have already discussed that and it is fully born now this is something which all of you should remember cram it it is fully born by central government and state and union territories bear the distribution cost okay means the entire expense of this uh, antyodaya anna yojana the money part is borne by the central government the distribution okay the distribution of the grains that responsibility the transportation the distribution that responsibility is taken up by the state government they are not paying in terms of purchasing that grain they are only taking care of the distribution aspect okay the scheme is expanded to cover 2.5 crore households that is another segment which you need to know now coming to mission jal shakti this will be covering the issue of available of uh, availability of safe and clean drinking water this will also be talking about the issue of sanitation which is much in use okay so let us see what are the dynamics associated with it so when we are talking about uh, this um, ministry of jal shakti first is the gobar dhan yojana okay as the word goes gobar you might be thinking it is related to cow dung well not really cow dung but also cattle dung ke sath there are other segments that is solid waste as well so you can see uh, this is organic bio agro resource dhan that is how the gobar dhan comes galvanizing g is for gobar ka g is galvanizing o is organic b is bio agro resources and dhan that is how you start using it and it is helpful for you and the moment something is uh, like let us say bringing a monetary gain for you it becomes a dhan for you and that's how the name comes so it is talking about what it is converting the cattle dung and the solid waste in the farms into compost biogas and bio cng these are the three aspects which it is covering okay and cleanliness definitely will be taken care of now self help groups will be created for this gobar dhan yojana okay and that the self help groups will be further motivating these possibilities related to clean energy and green jobs initiative because the moment you are creating self help groups you are creating the scope of the jobs as well then you can see under the scheme one village in every district now this is something which you should remember again one village every district of the country will be selected so that that becomes a model village and that impact gets radiated to other villages so like let us say you have selected one village in the entire district if this one becomes successful the other ones will also start getting inspired and they will also start like you know uh, getting influenced by it 
So this is what it is actually focusing. Now comes the Swajal Yojana. Achha, many people, I, I like you know, I was surprised to know just a few days back when I was discussing with one of my friends. He said that you will be surprised to know that many students are not aware that Asa Ministry ka naam bhi, Ministry of Jal Shakti. If you are not aware of it, please memorize Ministry of Jal Shakti. Okay, a lot of schemes are under it. Okay, Department of Drinking Water and Sanitation is the department which is taking care of the Gobardhan Yojana. So don't think that Department of Drinking Water and Sanitation is Ministry of Drinking Water. No, it's Department. Ministry is Jal Shakti. Anyway, getting back. So Jal Yojana, when we are talking about it, as you can see, it is related to sustained piped drinking water. Means clean water is coming to your house through a pipe. You can see there are a lot of people who are using hand pumps. And the, the arsenic, uh, like the fertilizers are used and the, there is a lot of arsenic in the water. It is unfit for drinking and that causes a lot of uh, diseases, right? So when we are talking about the possibility of this uh, Swajal Yojana, it's talking about sustained piped drinking water. Sustain means continual supply, okay? And this is powered by what? Solar energy. This is something which you should remember. Solar energy because you can use this information when you are dealing a main answer related to environment also. In prelims, they can club this Fajal Yojana with environment. They can fuse the two and create a new dimension, okay? So please be very clear. Again, it is launched in 115 aspirational districts in the country. 115 aspirational districts. So you can see that it is not launched in the entire India. We are going in a phase-based manner. Okay. Then we all can see it will train hundreds of rural technicians for operation and maintenance of Swajal units. So it is also related to training and empowerment. So that this will also generate jobs. Okay. Then you can see the cost sharing 90% is related to the central government, right? Or rather, we can also say the state government, the central government and 10% is associated with the community. The people, the local people will have to bear. So 90% is coming from the central government, 10% is coming from the local players. Okay, the common people, they are bearing. So it's a on a cost sharing basis. Swajal Yojana. Okay. The operations and management of the project will take care by the local villagers. So local villagers will be taking care of the operational aspects so that the machines are maintained, the tools are implemented. Now coming to Swachh Bharat mission. I said that this can qualify as a question because recently it completed its target. It is supposed to complete its target. It is 2nd October 2019. I told you that uh, there is a sunset time that is given. This was the sunset time meant for this one. And there is this open defecation free nation. That was the aim. So always remember the keywords. Aim is ODF nation. Okay. Swachh Bharat or clean India. Okay. These are the aims. And the date is very easy to remember. 150th anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. Okay, then you can see that which is the ministry that is involved. Please remember the ministry. This is the thing. Not just Ministry of Jala Shakti. Along with Ministry of Jala Shakti, there is Ministry of Urban Development also, which is a part of it. Okay, so Ministry of Urban Development and Jan Shakti both together are collaborating. Both are coming together to create a meaningful intervention. Okay, then. What are the objectives? Open defecation, toilets manual scavenging. Yes, just imagine a person is born in this country, has fundamental rights, right to life, dignity, and the person has to get down into a pit, into a manhole, it has to get down into a sewer tank just to clean it up, to clean the clog. And in human excreta, the person is all covered. Sometimes people get asphyxiated and they die because of it, right? So this is something which all of us need to pay attention to. That a person, the person's right to dignity to life is ensured. And how will that happen when you bring in mechanization, when you bring in more number of tools, okay? Uh, so that is something which the government needs to pay attention to. So open defecation, eradication of manual scavenging, then you can see modern and scientific municipal solid waste management. So this is associated with urban area. You can see urban development. The segment is there, right? Okay. Um, Devpriya, you're asking what uh, is Swajal Yojana, then central sector scheme? 90% is taken care of the... Yes, 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 Devpriya. And could you please show the slides of national food security? Ayush, we will see to it that a backup is created for all of you. Okay, so don't worry. Just focus on what is going on. You will not miss out anything. I shall ensure it. 
Okay, this is something which I uh, like promise on my part. I shall ensure that this is not missed out and you have some backup whereby you can revisit this specific lecture at least, at least the first lecture, if not all the lectures, at least this lecture, okay, to begin with so that the beginners are also like uh, encouraged and are uh, able to connect. Okay, now getting back to this. So uh, we are talking about this Swachh Bharat mission in which we are talking about the objectives and always remember objectives may confusion create kiya jata hai. Okay, just ministry is make extra ministry involved here. first aims should be clear. Then you can see manual scavenging is there solid waste management is there. There is a very important word behavioral change. Even if you make a toilet, but the person is feeling unhygienic to use the toilet. Okay. And, and prefers going in the fields. You cannot actually alter the possibility. So behavioral change is something which is also required. Okay. Regarding health sanitation practices. And then there's general awareness about sanitation and its linkage with public health capacity augmentation of ULBs and the creation of an enabling environment for private sector participation. So the key points which you need to remember is again private sector participation ka bhi scope Swachh Bharat mission mein hai. Okay. Private participation is something from where the examiner can give the statement and you may get confused. That pata nahi private a ki nahi tha. Okay. So be very clear about it. Okay. Anyway, what are the components? So definitely ghar pe toilet banayenge, household toilets. But it will be poor flush toilet means flush wala toilet. Why there are dry latrines also whereby you need manual scavenging. Someone coming and cleaning the pit. Okay. After every few days because it gets blocked by the yes thing. So poor and flush toilet is something which it is focusing. Second is community toilets. Then it is public toilets. Okay. So in community parks, etc. or community halls, community areas, and then public toilets for like, you know, press passers or common people. Then we see there's this dimension of solid waste management. Then there's public awareness from awareness only behavioral change will come. How will behavioral change come? So giving information. So in villages, when you go, there are walls that are painted. There are posters that are put up. There are Nukkar Nataks that are performed. Then education. So you will see school children are uh, actually em like employed or sometimes even inducted as Swachha Grahis who are supposed to encourage people to go for sanita sanitation practices, clean practices. Okay. So you can connect it with education and you can connect it with communication. Okay. So information, education, communication. How communication? In every time you can see on radio, we corona, corona, chal rahe, phone pe bhi corona, kisho milao, dial karo, kya corona si and all that stuff starts. Now, the thing is, when you are the, talking about this communication, push messages come. In communication, you can see on radio, there are programs that are announced. There are advertisements given by the government of India. Full page newspaper ads that are given. So that is communication. Anyway, moving ahead further, we all can see we are talking about the issue of implementation. So behavioral change definitely will be the primary focus because despite having the infrastructure, till the behavior is not changed, you can't make the intervention. Other points are just repetitive. Now, gender sensitive information is very important. Okay. Gender, the aspect of gender sensitivity and mass education are two core areas which are also incorporated within it. Okay. So when we are saying gender sensitive information with respect to women, what are the basic elements which should be there in a toilet with, with respect to the hygiene element? Because women are very much prone to catching infection because of their biological existence, the way the, the like human biology or the anatomy, the female anatomy is created. They are more prone to catch infection. And uh, that's why uh, the gender sensitive information is also necessary to be put forth. Also, it provides safety for women, especially during rainy season at night or during cold when it is uh, the weather is too cold in those times even in terms of exploitation of women i remember i had read last year a news whereby uh, in rajasthan uh, a stupid fellow was making a video of women who are defecating in open now that is something which is, which is very derogatory and it is also something which is uh, like you know it is um, it uh, makes a person a uh, letdown yes we will be talking about uh, keywords ODF plus and ODF plus plus. It is about to come. It is about to come. Okay. So have some uh, patience, Tayan. It is about to come. Okay. Wo aage diya hua. Ye mat dekho ki Swachh Bharat mission aa gaya to ma'am to ab ispe aa jayengi. ODF plus to gaya. No, chuta nahi hai. It is about to come. Anyway, getting back to this. So you were saying the 25% funds. You can see 25% funds. 
uh, when we are talking about it, it's coming from states and 75% is coming from center. This is for general states. But for special category states, okay, and northeast, okay, plus northeastern states, what is there? There is 90 is to 10. Okay, 90% is to 10, whereby the states are bearing the 10% uh, and 90% uh, is borne by the central government. Anyway, Swachh Bharat Grameen Mission, Grameen Phase 2. This is also something recent. So I first aspire to take this up. And after finishing with this Swachh Bharat Grameen, which is much talked about, then I will be taking about this Swachh Manch. Then there is this, as you can see, ODF plus and ODF plus plus. So, Jobi Bache Bechain or a hi hi ye chutia, ye topic nahi bataya, chike, just have patience. Everything shall be covered. Good, you are aware of it. How to read it, how to cram that information that is coming up. Just have some patience. Now, getting back to what I was discussing. So, Swachh Bharat Mission Grameen Phase 2. This was recently launched by this Ministry of Jal Shakti. That's why it is important. Okay. So what is it talking about? So you need to remember first and foremost the objectives. When we are talking about objectives, the same thing, cleanliness, hygiene, open defecation, those things are there. But the thing is, it is focusing on the Swachh Bharat vision, vision to have an uh, open defecation free India. Important areas are to motivate communities and Panchayati Raj institutions to adopt sustainable sanitation practices what is sustainable means there is no reversal of practice that a person started going to the toilet after 80 days or 70 days the person got exasperated and after two months left going to the toilet and starts going again in the open okay so uh, that is lack of sustainability to so sustainable sanitation practices is something which is required through awareness and healthcare Again, cost-effective technology is required, okay? Along with cost-effective technology, we all can see scientific solid waste management practices. Anyone who is doing the paint, please don't do that. Okay, so now we can see this and please erase it, what you have written over here, because I can't do it. The one who has done it can only erase it. So please do that, okay? I don't want this to be there on the screen now. So... When we are talking about this, uh, after this cost-effective technology, we can see this scientific solid waste management practice is also under Swachh Bharat Mission Grameen. This is phase two that we are talking about. Another key segment you can see is to promote gender and social inclusion. When we say social inclusion, caste dynamics will come. Okay, Age dynamics will come. So old age population, minorities, scheduled caste, scheduled tribes, all of them will come. Okay. Then along with this, there are some segments which you can see further. It is also going to focus on, like let us say someone has used the red pen, because when I use it, I can erase it. Whoever has done this, please squat out. Please it badmashi shuru Please squat out. Jisne bhi isko color kiya, I'm not underlining this. So then, yeah, please remove it. So when we are talking about this, now this has been done. Please remove this, else I'll... Trust me, I don't want this kind of childish behavior. Behave like students who are preparing for civil services. No one is going to use the pen other than me. Please do that. Okay, now moving ahead further. When we are saying this Swachh Bharat Mission Ramin Phase 2, in this, first you need to understand that the last five years in terms of toilet access and usage, no one is left behind. So first target is what? First target is that in five years, all are covered. Everyone is covered. Okay. Then solid and liquid management is associated with Gram Panchayat also. Because in the earlier one, what were we seeing? It was associated with urban area, whereby municipal corporations were required. In the phase two, we are connecting it with the Gram Panchayats and the rural area, the solid and liquid waste management. Again, the ODF plus and ODF plus plus is coming over here. So open defecation free plus, okay, and uh, which includes sustainability and solid and liquid waste management. That segment is there, which we'll be discussing in greater detail, just in a short while. Anyway, it is associated with some key areas, plastic waste, waste management, as all of you can see that. After plastic waste management, we can see it is related to biodegradable solid waste management. Grey water management, faecal, faecal and sludge management. Faecal is human excreta, okay. So faecal and sludge management, 
and it will be implemented it will it, it, it in fact should have started this year but because of corona everything has become quite haphazard but the time period is still 2025 so that's why i said it is in recent news it is latest and that's why it can be asked why because you know that after the sunset time period sometimes we revise the objectives we revise the targets swachh bharat mission was not so successful in many parts of rural india that's why swachh bharat mission gramin phase 2 has started that's the logic behind it and that's why these points which i discussed right now are more important and shall qualify as a question if the examiner pays attention to this area or wants to ask something related to this area anyway moving ahead further as we are moving we can see the funding of the project yes funding can also qualify as a question as all of us can see so in terms of funding uh well himanshu uh, why not 2023 because it is for 5 years my dear okay so i hope you might be remembering that that uh, any time we go for any centrally sponsored scheme it is for 5 years hai na uh, so 2023 now okay this is 2024 2025 i hope that is understood okay and प्लीज मतलब अगर तुम ये लिखने लगो कि वाई नॉट ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी क्वेश्चंस ओके सो नेशनल सैंपल सर्वे यस एग्जैक्टली ट्वेंटी थ्री पॉइंट एट परसेंट हाउस होल्ड है टॉकिंग अबाउट इंटरनेट कनेक्टिविटी अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड even in first world countries the problem has been noticed related to the digital divide poor connectivity expensive internet in india internet is fairly cheap very 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 cheap i would say but abroad if you go internet is also a very expensive service that you get so when we are talking about availability of internet and education through internet the gap is too broad and the kind of services that needs to be provided or the things which are related to awareness and education the insight has grown more fears specifically after the covid crisis okay but when we are talking about availability of the facility or the missing of uh, internet yes internet also is one of the aspects to empower the possibility of awareness and education but still the old trusted methods have proved to be more Uh, efficacious you know my father he is a masters in political science and even now every once in a while he starts struggling with a smartphone recently just a week back i read in a, in himachal pradesh a man had to sell his cow to buy a smartphone so that the children who are sitting at home do not miss the classes a country like india which is so highly impoverished just by running through data that only 27.8% household of this or that are able to get internet we are actually not looking into or delving deep into the problem just few minutes back you were reading that under national food security act two third of indian population will be covered under the beneficiary of 3 rupee 2 rupee 1 rupee kg uh, rice wheat and coarse grain a country where people cannot afford sufficient food grain do you think that they can afford a smartphone it's such a middle class aspiration my darling if you are really thinking of that first second if there is no smartphone how can you use the internet so smartphone is a luxury for many poor families and having internet is a further greater luxury so please understand when we are talking about education still moving to the internet mode or making rural population aware through the internet mode i would say is too um opportunistic or it is too i would say uh, uh, a long term method and it is a highly ambitious of project for a country like india that people are not getting sufficient food to eat and to cover themselves and getting toilets and we are talking about the issue of toilet jiske ghar mein toilet construction ka paisa nahi hai wo 5000 rupees toilet ke liye nahi nikal sakta hai us insaan se ye expect karna ki that person will get internet connectivity and a smartphone and know about using a toilet from the phone i think that's quite uh, like you know uh, contradictory and in fact quite a, a i would say insensitive approach whereby a person is not compassionate enough to understand i understand it's not your problem individually or any particular student maybe out of 200 or 400 whoever number of students are watching this program 
um, like you know uh, there is a fair chance that uh, we start having our own world view through whatever we are exposed to and um, we are not actually uh, connected to the grassroots whereby we are not living with them we are not experiencing what they are undergoing that's why many a time we are unable to understand what the grassroots are experiencing and what are the ground realities and challenges have that sensitivity it will help you not only to uh, like let's say write good social issues or social justice answers but also help you to solve the case studies of ethics gs paper 4 more efficaciously because you will be able to delve deep into the core problem or the lacuna that people are suffering from and you'll be able to provide affordable solutions for it anyway getting back to this game so allocation from the budget for the department of drinking water so the funding from where is it coming it is a novel model novel means a very new kind of model of convergence from different verticals of financing means the funds are coming from multiple sources okay so first source is department of drinking water and sanitation okay this is the first source the second source is what so it is coming from the 15th finance commission and mgrgs will also generate revenue okay see revenue generation models particularly from slwm so this is the second method third is what incentivizing by providing 12000 rupees for a person to construct toilet so every like person who doesn't have a toilet and is eligible to get those 12000 rupees that person after getting the 12000 will be able to so this is an individual family getting the money to construct the toilet okay then you can further see that uh, funding norms uh, are also there whereby the capita per capita basis in of in terms of like number of households in a given area will also be checked out so new funding norms are there then you can see that uh, the financial assistance will be given to the gram panchayat so financial assistance to gram panchayat and the community management uh, sanitary complexes so they will be provided with money so earlier they were given 2 lakh rupees now they will be given 3 lakh rupees so this is the fifth level of intervention and all these are getting combined together for the construction of toilet please understand that okay and uh, again you can see that 90 is to 10 for northeast okay and uh, the himalayan states and jammu and kashmir 60 is to 40 for most of the other states and um, 100 is to 0 for other union territories so because union territories are controlled by the union that's why okay anyway going back further to this swachh bharat swachh manch okay so when we are talking about the swachh manch we all can see the dimension uh uh ayush mohanty great you are aware of uh, of this uh, uh, bharat net but uh, let us not divert let us focus on sanitation we are focusing on health and sanitation right otherwise if we keep going a wire a lot of confusion will get created and i don't appreciate when as a student also and sometimes i see teachers also doing that have has a random jo scheme yaad aa raha hai padhane lagte this scheme that scheme whatever they remember blue pen control it erase it okay so do not go with a haphazard one could you are able to think and connect because for the main answer writing sometimes when you are dealing with a question you need to recall one scheme and blend it with the other and then the third then the fourth because one issue requires multi dimensional intervention and multi dimensional intervention is possible when you are able to recall schemes from multiple sectors multiple ministries multiple departments so good you are able to think and recall like that but please don't do it right now because let us focus systematically topic by topic all right we are like definitely i can discuss but that will just drag the lecture on this side now going with swachh manch swachh manch you can see it's a web based platform right and in this web based based platform we can see that every stakeholder is contributing to swachh bharat mission under a common platform okay so uh, swachh manch is basically a web based platform one thing when we are talking about stakeholders they can create invite and participate okay volunteering around neighborhoods they can also upload pictorial evidence of people like who are like you know uh, abiding by it and people who are not abiding by it okay then you can also see that uh, there is another dimension which you can see it will be integrating the existing swachhata app okay with the citizens grievance redressal app means if there is something wrong going on and you have a grievance related to it for the grievance redressal you can do so under the swachhata so they are trying to blend the two they are trying to bring the two together 
okay now getting from swachh manch let's go to the next one that is the swachh bharat mission odf plus and odf plus plus protocol all right in this we all can see that this odf achievements when we are talking about it it is related to holistic sanitation okay when we are talking about odf plus and plus plus they are what are the objectives and all so you can see the odf plus is related to sustaining community and public toilet usage okay whereby the public toilet is functional it's not unclean means if you go and someone has not flushed it it is stained it is not clean for months together or like you know it is not uh, it everything is like in a very unhygienic state there are mosquitoes there are flies you won't feel like using it so maintenance is a thing so sustaining those toilets and cleaning them and making them fit for usage is a part of odf plus and odf plus plus when we are talking about that it is associated with sanitary sustainability in terms of a complete value chain okay and when we are talking about value chain remember we were talking about the same thing in terms of solid waste management sludge management sewage management so that is what so you can say see safe containment processing disposal of fecal sludge and septage this is what SBM uh, is talking about ODF plus and ODF plus plus. Okay, so plus and plus plus are related to community activities. One is related to the community toilets and the the community level gearing up, and the second one is related to more large scale intervention in terms of management of that trash, management of the wastage that is getting created. Then we can see Jalmani. Jalmani is related to you can see. the quality of water in rural areas that is provided okay remember it is a part of the rural drinking water national rural drinking water supply program theek hai so this is rdwsp that is it is a part of it this jalmani program there is one more thing which is not mentioned here let me share that with you it is also related to providing clean and safe drinking water okay clean and safe drinking water in all the schools okay schools may clean and safe drinking water i gave you a intervention at jalmani ke andar which is not mentioned in this notes but you should know that okay then you can see it is the state governments will be implementing it with the help of uh, like you no know, various stakeholders the bodies which are elected like gram panchayat and all and along with that the communities as well as the self help group so it is the community participation and stakeholder which will be taking care of it then comes the har ghar jal means every house is provided with clean and safe uh, tap water and clean and safe tap water when we are talking about this it is under the objective of sustainable development goals which was created by U united nations remember sdg 2030 so when we are providing har ghar jal means every house is getting the clean and safe drinking water okay Uh, then this uh, this uh, specific intervention shall be fulfilled so about 28000 habitations okay affected by arsenic and fluoride contaminations will be checked by 2021 means by next year 28000 habitations or the areas where arsenic is found in the water or fluoride contamination is found in the water that shall be taken care of okay then we can see the next dimension i'll be just completing till this health and family welfare will be taken tomorrow okay so till this bit we will be just taking care of so we can see swachhathon 1.0 swachhathon 1.0 what is it it is a hackathon as you can see and what is hackathon it is related to solutions so crowd source solutions okay and these crowd source solutions are related to sanitation and hygiene means you are asking the people that what is the way through which we can remain sanitized and clean whom are you asking so you are going and you are asking the school students college students various institutions you are seeking help from startups okay and all these people are giving you innovative ideas sometimes they are themselves creating sometimes they are giving you ideas they will also be addressing some specific solutions related to what monitoring the usage of toilets changing the behavior also uh, related to decomposition of the this uh, fecal material and also the toilet technologies which are more sustainable like you know specifically in difficult terrains for example in kashmir or in himachal during the uh, winters water freezes how will you flush okay so uh, there are places which get flooded there are places where there are constant rainfall so there are multiple 
terrain related difficulties in those areas also how to have some efficacious toilet technology that is something which people will come up with smart solutions under swachhathon 1.0 again you can see swach iconic place this uh, the, this shrine of mata vaishno devi was declared a swach iconic place or the clean place in 2019 and this encourages other like you know heritage places or spiritual places to clean the area to keep keep the place neat and clean okay and these initiatives are not only by the jal shakti ministry which we have been dealing for quite some time but also the ministry of urban development plus the third ministry here is the ministry of culture plus the fourth ministry which is here is the ministry of tourism plus there is the state government which is incorporated so you can see there are five bodies which are playing a role so there is ministry of jal shakti urban development culture tourism and state government next is ganga gram so this is also related to sanitation but it is related to all the 400 4470 villages which are alongside the river ganga okay so all these villages shall be uh, facilitated with the possibility of sanitation like you know uh, uh, cleanliness of uh, uh, clean providing of water why because if you are residing near a river the possibility to dirty the river will be high okay by like let us say cremating the bodies by like let us say uh, picking up sand from the river for construction site uh, construction site so sand mining can take place so a lot of things can happen so cleaning those bodies uh, like keeping the ghats clean construction activities keeping it in moderation again modernization of crematorium all those interventions are taken under the ganga gram and that is associated with 4470 villages and this is under remember what ministry ministry of jal shakti don't get confused with the namami gange project this is how the examiner can confuse you that this 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 is it associated with the namami gange project okay are you understanding that because similarity of terms similarity of names creates a confusion okay along with this remember it is done in coordination with national mission for clean ganga i hope all of you have been able to understand and so far Uh, you have been able to enjoy the lecture most importantly you are now able to develop an insight how questions are created how the examiner examiner tries to create a, a possibility of confusion in your hearts and mind whereby you get confused with the prelims information so the next segment which i aspire to take up after completing this segment of health i have completed it more than two third today so tomorrow i'll be taking up the remaining part of health and i'll be taking up the issue of education which is another big area a lot of interventions have taken place related to education so all the schemes interventions uh, at national level or something which is out of the blue at global level and is much talked about and along with that the segments related to uh, like local players shall also be incorporated tomorrow i hope this session was beneficial and you all enjoyed thank you thanks a lot if you have anything else to discuss you can take it up i will be logged in for another few minutes and then i shall log out all right so if you have to chat or if you have to write anything feel free to share it i'm not getting any response so if i further don't receive any response i'll have to sign out so and no you don't get a pdf it's it's something which i have created so you are receiving a pdf from the institution but it is uh, related to um, like you know th this is uh, uh, miss uh, subhashri i'll be talking about social bubbles in the forthcoming lecture it's my habit to blend my lectures the past from the present the present with the future so that a child gets a wholesome understanding if a child misses like let's say if i'm talking about social bubbles and someone has joined the lecture like let's say on the third day and the child is like hey, what is social bubble and ma'am is connecting it with first day the child will get curious for the first day lecture getting it that's how you create a symmetry and continuity so that if a child misses any day lecture the child tends to uh, like you know connect and as far as this content is connected whatever i have showed you in the form of a slide we'll try to provide it to all of you in the form of um, 
like you know in the form of a recorded video maybe we can post it on youtube or something like that so that you can uh, like you know listen to it as many number of times as you want and you can also take screenshots by pausing the video or whatever so we are going to create some facility for this all right so um, rather than you personally getting it in, in an individual form all of you shall get it in the form of a youtube video all right so we are working towards it and we will be providing that to you so rather than individually talking about this um all the test papers of coaching institutes will it suffice i mean see none of the coachings can claim that all the questions that were asked were from uh, us majority can be there but not all why because the purpose of teaching any teacher who is teaching you or any coaching which is running a test series the purpose is to build your insight how to prepare for it how to go about it so that any information or any news which has not been covered till now but it comes in news like let us say in august or september you yourself are empowered to update it oh this thing man had taught this is an extension to that information so you yourself are empowered to strengthen your possibility or to update yourself accordingly okay so i can like give you a vision and an insight what are the priority areas what to touch how to prioritize something um, uh, how to save the information how to like you know um, create a priority with respect to which area to study more and which can be left which is casual which is old something like that okay i can create that but 100% assurance well that is tough to do why not be practical and honest um okay any other questions yeah iron pot example can be given in mains you can also give it in interview uh, subhashree swachh bharat wo mil jayega jay mangal you'll get that okay you'll get that all right thank you thanks a lot um how many months of current affairs okay on an average see ayush what happens is people say that how many months or how many years at least one year current affairs is a must okay means last year 2019 like let's say the uh, like 2019 june may se leke abhi tak ka like let's say till august september september max if october may exam they won't be covering the issues of september maximum they the question they will cover will be till july and august that's it okay first thing second thing which i would like to share is that when you are uh, yeah har jar har ghar jal is associated with jal jeevan mission like you know when as a dm uh, somalindra when you are implementing it as a dm you will get a lot of schemes and you'll be like oh these are connected so you will be consolidating that and implementing all right now going ahead with this yeah what i was sharing was um, yeah uh, so when we are talking about uh, like you know the the gov the ministry of uh, sorry the upsc creating questions so at least one year like let us say something which was in news in 2017 or 18 very important but not covered in prelims sometimes not always but sometimes those questions also qualify as one question or two questions for prelims okay those questions means those kind of schemes or those kind of interventions okay specifically to be uh, honest umbrella schemes flagship programs um or like let us say uh, other than the flagship interventions and initiatives sometimes they also take up uh, some major centrally sponsored scheme which is uh, much in news and it has not been covered in prelims um, then suddenly after a year or two they tend to cover it they do so in mains also like you know in mains i remember that uh, two three three years back they talked about national child policy national child policy was in news in 2013 14 but upsc asked a full fledged question in the year 2016 or 17 mains okay so after 2 3 years that question qualified as a full fledged question similarly uh, smart cities was in news in uh, 2015 after the budgetary allocation and the complete yojana that came on smart cities in october 2015 but uh, the questions came in 2017 mains uh one essay was asked in the optional uh, like the the language paper the hindi language paper and uh, three questions were asked uh, two questions in uh, gs paper 1 and one in gs paper 3 so that is also there uh if prelims can get deferred again well uh, deepsha that's a very in like i would say pertinent question and that is something which everyone is thinking about yes 
UPSC has made it clear that, um, but, but don't take it as a final statement on my side. UPSC has made it clear that this exam will not be conducted online. So if the exam is not conducted online, and if the exam has to be conducted in an offline mode, at least, at least a safe possibility should be created. UPSC has started with its interview. So the interview process which has recently started is a very interesting uh, intervention whereby the candidate is going to the UPSC Bhavan, but in the UPSC building, the child is not sitting in front of the board, the child is sitting in front of a camera. Okay, just like this, like a laptop, a camera. And the board members are sitting inside in another chamber, another room, and the child is seeing in the screen and the interview process is taking place like this. So it's not from the home, it is in the building, but not directly face to face. Okay, technology is assisting the process. So God knows whether UPSC will come with a solution for the prelims if it has announced it, or it is further going to defer. Only time can tell. But if you're talking about is there a possibility? Yes. When it comes to a possibility, possibility may be there. A beautification of edge of Ganga River, Namami Gange, Gram. No, 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 no. Ganga Gram scheme is different from beautification. Ganga Gram is related to empowering those villages which are situated on the ghats of Ganga or banks of Ganga. Okay, so don't get mixed between the two. Okay, and Namami Ganga is something which you need to take up in environment. That's why I told you a lot of schemes have a lot of sharing. Like I discussed COVID, it had a sharing with science and technology. Namami Gange environment shared with this Ganga Gram. Okay, so like that. Uh, I have already responded to uh, this question, Mayan Krana, one year current affairs. Okay, will be, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will be focusing at least on one year if there is some major issue which is not asked till now in prelims and has not been discussed till your March current affairs classes, which I was going through the key topics I just noted and checked out what topics have not been covered. So if those topics that have not been covered and which are important, I'm covering them as well. So I'm taking the liberty that I'm focusing not only from April to July and those topics which are left, I'm also consolidating that. Um, are bhaiya, Ayush, ek baat batao. Matlab flight arrange ho raha hai interview students ke liye? Yes. Lekin ye aaj ke lecture ke liye important discussion kyon hai? How is it going to facilitate your selection? I said, bachcha jaisa question tum kyo pooch rahe ho? But ye dikhata hai ki humse kam ek saal to preparation mode mein nahi hai na? Just reform and like you know upgrade your questions. Think like a bureaucrat, ask like a bureaucrat. Don't talk like a school going child in front of you. All right, fine then. I think most of the important questions have been covered. Yes, when it comes to charan, this is a very important thing. When it comes to model questions, every time I'm highlighting the areas and saying, this can be asked like this, this can be asked like that. Okay, these are the ways through which questions are raised. Listen, if I incorporate questions along with the fact, I'm discussing the fact as a question. If I start saying, suppose this can be asked like A, B, C, D. Now give me the answer. I'll be just eating up your time. I'll be eating up few schemes then. Usko kehte hain, time bharna. Okay? Time bharna matlab, aapke paas content kam hai, to aap kisi tarah ghanda bhar rahe. I'm not interested to do that. Okay? Question answer is practiced through test series and question answer is also practiced when I'm discussing the information in the format of a question. This is important. This can be confused with this. This is important. This is how it can be asked. Okay? So rather than giving you exclusive questions, Okay, and making you all attempt it mentally for 10 seconds. Okay, I'm not doing that. For the simple reason, there are stipulated number of hours, which is given to every teacher. Well, my two hours has been completed. I'm doing this out of my interest that, okay, let the children gain a clarity in terms of their preparation. Okay, but uh, uh, like in the stipulated number of hours, which I have been given, there's a lot of information that has to be discussed. That, the, that faffing up could have been done when there was a liberty of innumerable hours and that's not possible when so many other subjects also have to be covered. So I hope all of you appreciate and understand. Right? Uh, so model questions, do it from the test series. Test series are meant for model questions only. Swachya Survekshan League, padho usko. Har cheez mein neka 100% nahi cover hoga. Bhoat sari cheez hai news mein aengi, bhoat sari cheez hai cover up hongi. Try to update yourself with that. A lot of things are still left. Okay, so let us meet tomorrow. I think most of the important queries and questions have been handled. So take care. Good night.
hope to meet all of you tomorrow evening thanks a lot take care bye